Welcome, beautiful, wonderful warriors. So you probably saw this title and were as excited as I was when Spirit gave it to me because, I don't know, there's just something about working with animals that just gives us a different look and a different perspective. Um, and as you can see, the screen is black and this is going to be like a podcast format. I don't know if they're just going to have me kind of shake it up, you know, like one of those things, or if they're going to have me like when I did the moon cycles and I, I was like religiously like every single month, you know, for like 15 months, every eight, eight cycles of the moon, we did work. It's here on the channel. If you haven't seen it, um, I keep telling myself I'm going to clean this channel up. <laughs> I promise at some point I will. I'm working on a lot of things right now, just like you are. Right. So, um, when this came together, it was interesting because I've been feeling I was itching. I, f I felt a reading coming. I just had no idea in what way, shape or form. And this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, it's so hot. It's so hot. It's so hot. I'm like, I can't deal, you know, today spirit. I'm like, I'm just not feeling it, you know, and uh, meaning like I didn't want to get ready. And I'm like, I'm like being on, on camera sometimes is just a little debilitating for me. I love it and I love connecting with you guys on that level, but this is how I do my readings. This is how like if you if if we did a one-on-one, -on -one, it would be like this over the phone. Sometimes I do Zoom. It just depends, you know, but I I don't like to promise it because sometimes I'm just not in that headspace to like make, you know, contact with a human being like that. Sometimes I like just connecting like this. So uh, when this came to be, I felt like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. And also, I want you to know that I've opened up my life to doing one-on-one -on -one sessions again. So if you would like to do that with me, all of my information is in the description box and in the comments. I put it in both just in case people don't know where to go all the time. Um, but you can email me, magicalmedium at gmail.com, and we can set it up. I, I have a recorded version as well, which is, I think, like $50 cheaper and then that way you're still, you're getting me. <laughs> and when it's a recorded reading, you will get me. Like I'll get ready for you. You know what I mean? I'll get ready for you. I will, I will, you know what I mean? And that's for you. And it'll be on an unlisted link that is only for you and who you share it with. You are welcome to share it with anyone you want to. And the great thing about the recorded readings is I know sometimes you want to just be one-on-one -on -one with me, but it's kind of like this, right? It's the same thing, but it would be completely tailored to you and your life and your experience and your journey. And I really, um, I really love doing those. And so I've been trying to find my footing again with spirit and my work here and my purpose. And I can see it's kind of slowly finding itself. And in real time, welcome August. It's August 2nd, 2024. And we are just days away from the new moon, Mercury going retrograde, and then the Lionsgate portal on the 8th. And this year it's super potent and super powerful because it's literally 888 because 2024 is the number eight and it's the year of the dragon. So there's just like all these wonderful things. Um, for the longest time, I, I kept calling it the Dragon's Gate portal instead of the Lion's Gate portal. And then when I did more research, I found out that there was a reason for that. And um, I'll let you research it further if you're not familiar with the Lion's Gate portal, because I do think it's something that is your own journey. Um, I could tell you my version of it. I mean, I have tons of readings and stuff I've done with it. We've gone live before. I don't know what's going to happen this year. Um, <clears throat> I'm really going with the flow. Also, my throat chakra has felt really tight, like right before I started this and I was feeling really overwhelmed. So I'm getting the, the feeling from spirit that it's really time for all of us to get some grounding. And I believe that that's why they have us doing the reading like this today, because I, if you can, it's awesome if you can close your eyes. So if you're watching this at a time where you could just lay down and just close your eyes, like that would be the best when you're listening to your reading, you know, because you know, then the spirit animal is like really talking to you. Also, when I shut my door today, my angel like flipped upside down and the angel's looking at me upside down and I'm feeling like this is how you guys are kind of feeling right now. Like you're kind of like, 
oh my gosh and i feel you because it's the end of the cancer moon it's pretty brutal there's a lot of uh, potent energy there we're going to be going into the new moon in leo and then we'll be in fire fire energy and i promise you everything's going to fall into place and it's going to feel really really good right now we're at the end of the toothpaste you know what i mean we're just trying to squeeze all that last little bit you know um i had a little thing last night with my familiar and um and she had an accident and she's never done that before. And I've noticed in this last year, you know, she's getting up there in her age and stuff and I, and just all these little things. And because I've cared for elderly animals, I, I used to run like a semi rescue shelter years, many, many moons ago when I was in my twenties, I'm in my fifties now. Um, but, uh, you know, I remember people would say, oh my gosh, you're like the Grim Reaper. Why do you keep adopting these old animals that are going to die? I'm like, because they should die with dignity. I'm like, they should die with love and they should die with compassion because animals give us so much. They literally give us so much. But last night I was not feeling it. I was so tired. I wanted to go to bed and I never go to bed as early as I did. And I had to scoot her in the house because she didn't really want to come in. And I was like, dude, I know I'm like, but I'm tired. I want to go to bed tonight, you know? And she had an accident and I know she didn't mean to, but it was just, it was just so, it, I think I yelled at her because it was a part of me that was terrified that she's dying, you know, and I just like can't, you know, because I've lost so many beautiful animals and familiars in my life. And I know what that feels like. And I've had her for 13 years, um, or for 11 years. And, um, and that's like a really hard thing, right? Like when you lose something, and I know so many of you, I've been, you know, in your lives when you've lost your familiars and your furry friends or your reptile friends or your winged friends. Um, but I, I have to say that I had a bird when I was younger. I had a few birds and I always felt weird having a bird. Like it felt weird to cage them. I'm like, they have wings, they can fly, you know? And so when this was coming together, all of these things in my life were kind of coming together for the last like few weeks that I've been going through the pain and suffering that I've been going through in my own life and through my avatar and the changes with spirit and the transformation and the letting go and all of that. And I'm on here, this spinning ball with you too, you know, like we're all here together. None of us are getting out of here alive. Our avatars aren't getting out of here alive. We're getting out of here alive, our souls, but our avatars aren't. Um, and so, you know, with that being said, I've always felt this kinship with any flying creature because the freedom that they have to just fly and being a triple fire with my moon and water, I, you know, have always, you know, felt this need to move and flow and grow, you know, um, and I'm very mutable, you know, my energy is very mutable as well. So it's very interesting so I thought it was most interesting that when this came together, I was outside, I was enjoying the morning. It was just this, like, I almost wanted to grab my camera because it, it was, the sky was magical. It was like the sun had just come up over the trees and it was really, really beautiful. But there was this haze in the sun and, um, and spirit said, this is why they wanted you to close your eyes because they want you, all of you who are here, if you've made your way here, whether you're new, whether you're coming back and thank you to those of you who keep coming back. I love you seriously, all of your support. And thank you for the monetary support recently. You know, who you are, that really makes so much of a difference. I lit a candle for you. I hope uh, you felt that good energy, my dear friend. Um, but yeah, uh, there's just so much potency and beauty that's happening on the planet right now. Um, and so they, you know, they're like, if you're here right now, whether you're new or whether, you know, you're coming back, this is the time for you to really step into your power. And so they had me go muted because, or excuse me, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not muted. <laughs> you're like, it, this reading, can you imagine I do a whole thing? It's all black. It's like, it's all a telepathic reading. <laughs> can you, that would be kind of interesting and fun. Maybe I should do a shorts like that and see what comes through for you guys. That would be so fun. But I feel like that's what they're doing is they want us to have fun with this um, transition and have fun with our teaching and our learning right now, because that's what it is. It's a growth and a learning process. And so they want you to um, tap into your own intuition and your own gifts when you're listening to these messages and these downloads. So this morning, as I'm meditating and, and bowing to Ra in this magical sky, 
um, I said, you know, how can I serve today? How may I help? And I felt a reading and I've been feeling a reading coming on, like I said, um, for the last like 24, 48 hours. But all of a sudden I looked up and I turned around and the sky had these super cool puffy clouds, but then there were like these, you know, those clouds that look like they've been stretched out and they call them the angel clouds, right? Holy shit. I, I'm not kidding you. Like I, they didn't have me get my camera and I was a little disappointed, but I understood why, because it happened so fast. So, um, basically I saw this great Eagle in the sky and then the Eagle like kind of morphed into, um, uh, owl. And then it morphed into a bat. And then I was like, oh my gosh, that's our reading. And then I heard which bird is guiding you. And then I thought, well, bat's not really a bird, is it? I'm like, I mean, it's a winged creature. And and they wouldn't even like have me look it up or anything. So either we're going to talk to the bat or that's for us to go on our own. As of this point, you know the order more than I do. I believe I know the order. Um, but we are going to be speaking with Great Eagle today. We are going to be speaking with the owl today. I don't know if we'll be speaking with the bat, but if it doesn't come up and it resonates with you, then that means you're meant to go research that on your own. And if you're new here and new to this in general, when I looked out as 1101, um, it was like I was watching the time go, but then all of a sudden when I, it was like I kind of was zoning out and then I looked and it was 1101 and then it was 1102. So it was interesting because I felt like those meant dates. So it could be something for the tribe. So it could be something like November uh, 1st or November, November 2nd. Actually, I do have my calendar in front of me. I was like, I wonder if those are election days because, you know, they, it's always the first Tuesday of the month. So let me see. No, no, no. That's the fifth is the election day. So anyway, so the first and the second. Oh, it's a new moon. So there's a new, the new moon in Scorpio is on November 1st. Okay, that's really powerful. So there's something about from this new moon. So if you are still here right now listening, um, I don't know if they're gonna have me mention this in the other readings, but uh, they're saying that from this new moon in leo to the new moon in scorpio is like the most crucial like juicy like they're literally were showing me like the most juicy fruit like just that fruit that you love that when you eat it you're like it's like dripping down your face you're like i love that fruit so much you know what I mean? you're like i love this fruit right it's like that like the next few months are going to be creatively beautiful and juicy um if you allow them to be it's also going to be a time on the planet where a lot of things are going to amp up in other energies. And they're saying, don't look at that. If it doesn't feel good, don't look at it. Look at other things. Look at things that make you feel juicy and creative. And, you know, like that kind of thing where you're like ripe for the picking. Because they're like, this kind of time of energy doesn't happen. And when this Lionsgate portal opens, it's like, even though we're already in, like the Lionsgate portal is already opening you know, some believe that the Lionsgate portal opens on when the Leo season begins. That's why they call it the Lionsgate portal because it happens during Leo season. That's another reason why some people believe that, you know, it's the, actually the Dragon's Gate portal. So whatever, either way, whatever you believe or look in, and it's not for me to decide. I love and support anything anyone believes because that's their message and that's their medium. So however that comes through for them. Um, but I'm just hearing this is just a really potent time. So remove yourself as much as possible from other people. Also, I heard, yes, make that Halloween costume, challenge yourself, like do something that, you know, even if it's like that, right? Because what if you're like, oh, I used to write or I used to do this, but you're, you're trying to do it, but it feels forced. But they're like, what if you took another avenue though? What if you took another tack and something that you've always wanted to do, something you've always wanted to try and just play with it. Even if it's just a little bit every day, even if it's just if singing one song every day because you love singing, just one song every day. You don't have to record it. You don't have to share it with anybody. It's just about getting your juices flowing. It's different for everybody. Okay. So, um, then, uh, so yeah. So if you're drawn to working with the bat spirit medicine, please, by all means search it out and you just go into whatever search engine you look for and, or you work with, and you just put bat spirit, animal spirit medicine. It's different. If you put in the words, you get different uh, responses like today we're working with the medicine cards but that's an indigenous Native American deck that comes from the Native American spirit medicine spirit animal medicine and then we're also going to be working with the bird message messages Oracle which is you know I mean hi you've seen we're working with the flamingo 
right? So I do believe we're going to have a mystery bird of some kind. I just don't know what it's going to be. Okay. So, um, cause I was like, is the, isn't a bat technically like a flying, that they call them flying rats. Cause I think, um, I love rats. I love all animals, but because they're, <laughs> because they're, um, not a bird, right? But I don't know. I don't know. And flamingos, I thought were so interesting and so funny because I'm like, flamingos don't really fly very well, right? Like you don't really, you see them standing more than you see them flying, but they can fly. So that's interesting. And, um, a little wink, wink for those of you who are still here and listening here. If you're looking, if you're not sure, you know, blah, blah, blah. The flamingo was um, chosen because it's on page 40. The spirit medicine from the Oracle deck from the book is on page 40. So that's your wink, wink hint, the number four. Okay. So I will meet you over to your readings. I hope this helped you in any way and stay in flow as much as possible. And actually when you can, if you're, if you're going through a rough time, get it out and then go back in and then be in gratitude for that experience. Because I had a thing last night that was really rough and I went through a 24 hour period of, you know, I basically, I went through about 72 hours of thinking I was a fucking superhero and then realizing like what I had really done and like the after effects of that. And that's my own story that I don't know if they'll have me share on Lula's life, but if so, go check it out. And if you're new here, please follow links to Lula's life and Bubba the Great. That's my, my cat, my familiar that I was speaking of that had her little accident. Um, send her some good energy. I'm not really sure what's going on with Bubba, but you know what? I will say this. She was really high yesterday. So, um, we went from, uh, having an, a scorching heat wave again to like, um, it getting like really like cold where it was like forties overnight. And it's just like really gives you whiplash. And so, uh, our heat wave came in, we, it rained, which it rarely rains in the summer here. And that's a whole other thing, uh, which was really powerful. And so we got a nice soaking and then, um, it got cold cold during that time, like chilly, like it was barely in the fifties during the day. And then it like zoomed up to like 80 yesterday. And I was like, I'm just not ready for this. And it was like kind of humid and, and Bubba and I were both like, no. And I had all these chores to do. And it was just that day. And it just got, I got grumpier and grumpier and grumpier as the day got on. And then, to, and then I was like so tired and all I wanted to do was go to bed. And then Bubba accidentally peed outside the litter box. I think it's because she tries to get in this one spot because she's very dainty and she doesn't want to get her feet wet. But, and, and the only reason why I knew is I was like, it was so quiet in the house and I was like right behind her getting ready for bed. And I was like, and I heard like the noise of going to the bathroom and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? And she was like, Meryl, what? I'm like, dude, you're not in your litter box. I'm like, what are you doing? By the way, when I looked down, it was 17 and all I saw was 17. And even though I know it's probably 30 something, so that can mean something to some of you. It's also the number eight. But yeah, so just a lot of magic, 88 portal, um, 888 portal, the triple eight, because 2024 is eight, and uh, Mercury retrograde. There's going to be a lot of spirit work coming your way. So hang in there. Uh, we're going to be working a lot together uh, over this month. And um, yeah. All right. That's it. Sorry. I was like kind of in this bubble. And then all of a sudden I just felt like my body just went into work mode. So uh, if you are wanting to, if you want medicine from all of them, absolutely positively go. But if you were drawn to one particular, that's the bird that's guiding you now. Cause it's like, which bird is guiding you now? You know, I think it says now, like how funny I can't even read. I have to go put my glasses on. I can't even read my own writing. Oh no. It just says which bird is guiding you. So, but I did feel now. So we'll see if that makes it you, you know, now more than I do, whether or not it made it to the title. Anyway, so if you can, like I said, just keep your eyes closed when this, when the spirit animals are talking to you, you know, just keep your eyes closed and, and get into the energy of that spirit animal and then, um, you know, go from there. All right. All of my information is in the description box and the comments. I will see you over at your reading. Have a blessed day. I love you so much. And spirit loves you too. And we'll see you over there. Bless be out. Oh. Bye. Welcome reading one. I was just thanking Great Eagle from the sky for granting us this beautiful gift of their medicine today. When I paused the video, I noticed that it was at 1903 in uh, spirit numbers. It comes to the number 13, which is the Divine Feminine, 
But then if you also add that together, it's the number four, grounding and stability, foundation. And that can go down to the smallest number of one, which is the eagle. In the medicine cards, in this beautiful book, we have uh, the number one, the very first animal is eagle spirit. By the way, um, I just want to say thank you and welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Get comfortable. I'm feeling really spacey and flighty, and I guess they could say that's the bird medicine. <laughs> I've got bird brain, but um, no, I really feel like some of you need to get grounded. And if you're not feeling grounded or if you're kind of like hustling and bustling and listening to this, this isn't the time. Spirit is saying your greatest teacher is your own energy field. So they're saying when you, you know, if you're like, I just want to listen to this and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. In fact, never listen to any teachings from spirit or readings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, transmissions, whatever they are for you, you never want to listen to them when you are ungrounded. Because it's easy for the monkey mind, as they say, the busy third dimensional ego, all that to take over and <sighs> right. I feel like you needed a oh, just relax. Spirit is giving you permission to relax in real time. It is August 2nd, and we are at the very, 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 very end of the Cancer Moon. We are in the rest and restore phase. Whenever you watch this, it's timeless, but in real time, I too myself am tired. I have been going through the gamut of emotions myself, which is why I wasn't even sure I should do a reading. And then I asked Spirit, how can I serve today? How can I help? And in my own morning meditations and stretchings, the eagle came to me. The eagle came to me first. And then the rest morphed after that. But the eagle came to me and I sat with eagle spirit for a moment. And I just had to laugh at my behavior the night before and forgive it and understand that that was my ego. And that was my old life and my old me that wants to bitch and complain. And, and you know what I mean? Blame, 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 victim, victim, victim. That's not who I am. That's not who you are. If you are here right now, you chose to receive this medicine today from great spirit. That is the eagle, is great spirit. If I weren't doing it like this, I would show you the picture. And every animal in these books has a number, and then they have a word that, or sometimes it's a phrase that represents who they are. And for the eagle, literally, its word is spirit. Also, um, I don't know what is going on with you. I don't know if you guys are having this too, but. I have to talk about it because it's happening while I'm literally in the middle of your reading. But we've been having like this, the weather has been like all over the place here. So the mosquitoes have been like all over the place. And um, I'm getting that you're having a hard time with mosquitoes too. So I'm hearing research it and work with those energies to help repel them. Like for myself, I put a bunch of lemongrass oil all over me and around me, but it's still trying to get me. I'm like, damn it. I'm like, I'm like, I've been trying so hard. This, it's interesting that uh, a few summers ago I was living, ooh, and I looked down, it was 2255. So your angel number to work with is 2255. And um, when we started this, when I said 1903, I also feel like that means something to you guys. Like maybe you had a past life in 1903 or you have an ancestor or something with 1903, okay? It could be something that was invented in 1903. I have no idea. It just like, it was such an, whenever I see something that looks like a year like that, I not every single time, but like a lot, most of the time I'll get a year. And that's what I felt. I felt like it was like a year energy. So, um, that may be something you want to work with in meditation. If it, if it spoke to you, if it didn't, and it, you didn't even notice it, then that's not for you. You know what I mean? But if you're like, dude, 1903 again, you know, that means something. Same with 2255. It could be that you are at the store and you're like, dude, that was, I just had that on my receipt, 2255. Well, go look it up. It's an angel number. Um, oh, and then I just looked at 2355 and they're saying like, for some of you, it's like the time keeps going, whether you like it or not, it's going to keep moving. It's going to keep flowing. And, um, you know, you can't get away from certain things is what I was starting to say with the mosquitoes. So I feel like if you're having a, a thing with mosquitoes, I, I'm, my heart goes out to you cause it sucks, but, um, tea tree oil and lavender oil are really good to put on your mosquito bites. It helps, um, pull the, you know, and chamomile, 
but you can also work with real lavender real chamomile like soak them in water and then like put bandages and put them you know or like like cotton you know cloth and wrap it around your you know foot or wherever you are put a compress on where it is um 24 oh my gosh so there's something going on with you guys and and numerology uh but i'm hearing for some of you yeah, like there's a lot of things you could do to help make the mosquito situation better. And then there's a lot of things that can help heal it after. Um, okay. So I don't know why I was meant to share that with you. But um, the other thing too, is that two years ago we were home free and I was having an issue with the mosquitoes and I did everything I could possibly do. It wasn't working. I'm like, I, I'm like, I have to get into a home. I have to get it. Like I, you know, and it's interesting because when I look back on what happened two years ago and like where my husband and I were then and like where we've come to now, it makes me realize that like, you know, you can't really run away from yourself. Like we would live in like false illusion bubbles instead of like facing like our, our darkness. And especially right now, I mean, we're at the very, very end of the moon, right? Like where it's almost dark, where the new moon is starting. So I'm hearing it's time to put yourself out there and do something brand new, something you've never done before, something that you've wanted to do, something from like two years ago. And that's why they're having me, whenever they have me share my personal story, sometimes I'm like, I'm literally in my head saying to them, it's like, I'm speaking, but I'm saying to them, I don't really like, this is not relevant. Like, why do I, like, can we just talk about the eagle, you know? But they're like, no, because we need to share our stories and our experiences so we can show each other, like, you know, my my husband and I, we tried to take the easy way out because there was this offer that came to us that was all shiny and pretty and whatever. But at the fucking core of it, every fiber of my being, there was like a gazillion red flags. But I was like, I don't care at this point. I'm like, I'll at least take this. to get. I'm like, this must this must be a sign from spirit to get out of the mosquitoes, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, and right after we got into that situation, we pulled our ad down and we didn't respond to anybody else. And, and we had put an ad up and it's a whole long story. If you've done with this, you know, um, but for the new people, it doesn't really matter. Basically is be careful what you wish for, right? Or don't, don't jump the gun. Don't get ahead of yourself. Did we learn a lot of lessons? Yes. Would we have maybe learned them a different way? Maybe. I don't know. Like, it's not about that. That's the tech I took. And this movie came into my orbit yesterday, and it was like loosely, it was a Hallmark movie loosely based on It's a Wonderful Life, but it was so cute and really, really well done. It's like one of those, if you'd never seen It's a Wonderful Life and you'd only seen that, you'd almost compare that to It's a Wonderful Life. It was that cute. Um, well done, Hallmark. And I, I, of course, I can't remember the name of it right now. But, um, but what it, what it, makes you realize is that sometimes you go after something because you're like, it's right there. Oh my gosh, it's easy. You know, but if I did this, it'd be a little harder. Or what if I looked at it this way? It's like, if you're looking at everything with blinders on, or if you're making decisions from your past, then you cannot be in your present and then create and manifest your future. So I feel like for some of us, it's like the mosquito is like a metaphor and you may want to work with the mosquito spirit medicine. Yes, they have a purpose. Also, I found out that the males actually don't bite. They don't bite at all. They don't bite you. They don't, they just are living their best life. They're impregnating females. That's all they do. And the females are the ones that suck your blood because they're giving the blood to the babies. And they need to make more mosquitoes because mosquitoes, you know, are food for, I mean, I could go on and on for how many things they're food for but then also they help with the ecosystem and it doesn't matter if we don't like them or they're pesky or they're driving us nuts or like me I'm like dude what am I, I I'm a positive I'm not even like the like I think or no I think I might be their favorite blood type or it's like one of those things it's like it's either I am their favorite blood type or I'm not and I'm like I guess it's just because of like what we are like as avatars like you know we're like these light beings and so they're coming to take our blood because we've got like supernatural blood and then that case I'm like all right you know dip into the system fuck man but at the same time I'm like I don't like these welts on my body and I don't like I don't like them extracting anything without my permission 
you know? So, um, and also last night when I was trying to sleep, they were like coming in and like, you know, it's like, I'm just starting to fall asleep. Do you ever have that? And all of a sudden it's like, it comes by your head and your ear and you're like, no, you're like, no, no, sorry. I didn't mean to startle you, but right. Like, so there's, there's a reason for that. And it's also because I let the darkness overtake me yesterday. And instead of like laughing it off and laughing through it, right. I just, like I let it come in. I was just like, you know, I literally went outside and it hasn't been clear outside for days because it's been storming. The weather's been horrible. And I went outside and it was so dark and it was so clear. And like the, the stars were so bright. And I went outside and I was like giving the finger to the sky and being like, fuck you, man. Like I'm really over this shit. Like I'm really fucking tired of doing this manual fucking shit, man. I'm like, because you know, my familiar, she's molting and it's between her hairballs and she had an accident outside of her litter box. And like, she's getting older and just like all these things. And I was just like starting to fall apart. And I spoke about it in the beginning of this, if you want to go back and watch it. Um, and I spoke also about what's going on astrologically. So you may want to go check that out. Um, but anyway, I digress right? It's like we chose this and we can't live in our pity party feeling sorry for ourselves. We can get upset. That's fine. Spirit's like, of course you're meant to get upset. Like we're not robots. If that's the case, they would have just made us robots that like were very human. Like we were human, but they made us like not really have emotion, but we do, but we don't, right? Yeah. We lived a life. You lived a life here. No matter how old you are and no matter when you found this or, you know what I mean, whenever you awakened, found spirit and found this, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this is the first thing you're ever seeing in spirit. You're like, I don't know what led me here. I don't know why I'm reading, you know, watching or listening, whatever it is about this ego. I don't even know who you are, lady. You know, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, this is just the time where spirit's like no more pity party, no more bullshit, no more like it's done. It's done. You know, you shit your pants this year, Charlotte <laughs> from sex in the city. If you don't know, it doesn't matter, but you get the metaphor, right? Like we've all been through it. They know, but deal with it, get through it and move on. I asked spirit this morning. I was like, I don't know how to get over like this energy that's been like moving through me. I'm like, why am I so angry? Like, what the fuck? And my husband said something to me recently Cause I had said to him, I'm like, I'm like, you're just so angry. And he's, and, and he didn't say anything and he was showing his anger outwardly. And I'm like, gosh, I'm like, you're just so angry lately. I feel like I can't be around you. And, um, and, uh, he was quiet for a second and then he goes, you have anger in you too. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't remember what I said, but basically, you know, it's like no shit on me. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm like, I don't get angry. Like I'm a medium and like, I'm perfect. And I am in a high vibration all the time. You know what I mean? It's a fucking sack of shit. That's a load of shit. That's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I had a fucking meltdown yesterday and I've been having a meltdown this whole week. And you know, the interesting thing is it's whenever I have this like little pity party for myself and I eat anything that is not good for me. I had this beautiful, it's all the ingredients are magical, but it's refined sugar. And for whatever reason, every time I eat refined sugar, I feel fine. I feel fine. I do. Like the first day or two, I, I'll have a little of the candy bar this day, a little of this day. But by the time I eat the whole candy bar, I swear to you, within like 24 hours, I become a psychotic, maniac, mean, I don't know what it is, but sugar is not my friend. The refined sugar is not my friend, but I can have other forms of sugar and it doesn't bother me as much, but it still bothers me because I know that my body on this planet only really wants really pure foods. My avatar craves pure foods, especially during such a dark time that we're going through. So this could be a message to you as well to clean up your diet and clean it up because, you know, I kind of did a detox yesterday and then by like, I don't know, 10 o'clock last night, I was like, okay, I, f I feel better. Like I didn't want to eat where the last few nights I'd been wanting to eat late because I was having carbs that day and not that carbs are bad, but I was just like, I was eating a lot of things. The thing, the food themselves are not quote unquote bad for me, but the combination and how much is, and our stomachs are shrinking. And I didn't think that that was true. Like I kept hearing that and I'm like, I don't feel that at all. And then all, and then I ate like what I would eat, um, when I was like 
kind of quote unquote pigging out. And I swear to you, it, and it's not even as much as I used to, like not even close. And I, I couldn't even, I was like, I don't feel good. Oh, I'm going to eat the rest of this tomorrow. And so I can feel my body changing. I can feel my body shifting. And I feel like you are as well going through this transformation. I mean, if you chose the great Eagle spirit to guide you right now, then use the medicine of great spirit to guide you. And we're going to jump into that. So each of them also has a poem that was written by this beautiful uh, Native American ancestor. Um, in fact, at the very beginning of the book, I always like to, this is the dedication from the artists and the writers of the book. It says, it is with great love and respect that we dedicate this work to Grandmother Twyla for her lifetime of service to the teachings of the Wolf Clan and the children of Mother Earth. For Yahweh knowed she whose voice rides the wind. And there's a beautiful feather there, picture of a feather. So, you know, when you're hearing these teachings right now, just remember that this was translated from Grandmother Twyla, one of the Native American ancestors. And when they speak of the wolf clan, the wolf is um, number five, and the wolf is the teacher. So with that being said, here is the poem from Grandmother Twyla. Eagle, fly high, touch great spirit. Share your medicine, touch me, honor me, so that I may know you too. And before we go any further, they said to drink some water and stay hydrated. Also, um, I've been like addicted to salt lately. I, I've, I'm not even a salt person and I've been so addicted to salt and I really genuinely thought like, it was an addictive thing, but if you're having more salt than normal, I feel like it's because salt retains water and I feel like they're trying to get us to stay hydrated. Um, not that you want your body to have water retention in a negative way, but in a way that like, have you ever seen people will salt watermelon in the South? Um, or like where it's in like really hot places, there's reason for that. Hot sauce is really good too. When it's really hot, it's actually good to eat hot things. I know it sounds silly, but what it does is it's actually releasing the toxins from your body. Another thing you may want to work with is Zendocrine. So um, I was blessed with a Zendocrine oil from one of our tribe members and lately I've been hand washing my clothes. You know, I live off grid and I, um, every time I want to go to the laundromat for some reason, it's like, it just doesn't align. It's bizarre. So, um, I've been hand washing my clothes, but they've been having me hand wash my clothes in like certain oils. And I, <laughs> here's me like, Oh, that'll be nice. Like, Oh, that'll smell nice. Or, Oh, that'll feel good. I like that oil. <laughs> and it wasn't until they told me, I mean, I have so many oils, honestly, I, I have so many, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you over 50 easily. So, um, they had me pull out the Zendocrine oil and I was like, why? And then I realized that not only was I using the Zendocrine oil and the first time I used the Zendocrine oil and I was pushing, um, I had boiled some water and when it got to a point where I can, you know, put my hands in it, they, um, had me add the Zendocrine oil when it, when it was, really, really boiling. And then I put the lid on and then it just like went into the water. It was so, so potent, so powerful. And, um, hold on one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I had it. Uh, and when I was submerging the clothes in there, it was like, I was holding the clothes down and just kind of like washing and using my hands and stuff. And oh my gosh, you guys, I felt like I was going to vomit. Like I felt like I was going to fall over. I was like, what is happening? All of a sudden I got the spins. I thought I was having a heart attack. I shit you not. I really genuinely thought I'm like, this is it. I'm going down. I'm like, and this is the way I'm going to go. I'm like, I'm, and it was kind of sad. Cause I was like, Oh God, Alder's going to find me dead here. And, um, and then I was like, no, cause we were on a break. I'm like, he won't even find me dead. I mean, I was going through like all of these things in my head. My, and when they say, they see that you see your life flash before you, I was like, no, I was more like, Oh no, this poor, my, my beloved and Baba, what is she going to sit with my dead body? Like I had all these like horrible things that were going through my mind. And then I like sat down and I was like, okay, after I calmed down, after I, you know, whatever I realized, I'm like, holy shit, it was that fucking oil because I put like three drops in or whatever, like potent. And it's like pure Zendocrine oil. So I want you to work with Zendocrine. Um, so just, I'll put it below and you can either work with the oil or however you want to work with it, because I don't know exactly how it's made or where it comes from, or, you know what I mean? Like from the one I had, I'm saying, you know what I mean? So I don't really, 
Um, see what I mean? Like, I feel like I should know more about the body and I feel like they're challenging all of us. I feel like the great spirit is challenging all of us to get more aligned with our bodies and our chakras. And it's like, we've been kind of like just dragging these meat suits around, but not like, like understanding how much it really is our temple, even though we're like, our body is our temple. No, I saw myself in a different light yesterday where I was like, I'm not treating my body like a temple. I'm treating it like a garbage bin. And I'm like, I cannot do that anymore. And a lot of it is from addiction. I have a serious food addiction that's been with me since childhood uh, for so many reasons, for so many reasons. And every time I think I work through something, something else will come back. And I had been eating really good and feeling really good. And then all of a sudden I was drawn to like all of these like foods that, you know, like processed foods and, and, you know, I'm vegan. So it's like, it's not like it's terrible. And I eat as orga organic and natural as possible, but still it was the way I was eating in them. And it was almost like spirit, like led the door to go to like the darkest part of my soul again, so that I would kind of go through this other breakdown and meltdown, if that makes any sense. So uh, this is a, a huge, like, you know, it's time for you to go through the whole metamorphosis. And also, um, there's a legend with the eagle. Look up the legend of eagle and rebirth. But a according to eagle specialists, they say it's nearly, it's literally impossible for that to happen. They've studied eagles their whole lives. But if you look at the eagle as a spirit, you know what I mean? And not as like the, I'm a scientist, this is the way the eagle works. And I'm going to tell you what is, you know what I mean? It's like, in a way, like, yes, even though they've studied their habits and studied them and blah, 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 blah. It's still, there are always going to be those great spirits within spirits, right? Like that one eagle or that, that's it. You've had it. Sorry. Hold on. Spirit, forgive me. Oh, and I looked up, it was 41. <laughs> Spirit, forgive me for killing that mosquito. I'm sorry, but I was like, it was too much. It was like, I had to get it. I was like, nope. I'm like, you fucked me up all last night. And I was like, and you know what the sad thing is, is like, to me, it's like, that's why I don't want to kill it because it's like, you took all my blood. Then what the fuck is that for? You know what I mean? Like if I just kill it, I feel like then what is it for? She doesn't get to feed her babies, you know, um, uh, you know, I can go on and on and on with the circle of life and, and all of that. Because I even said to spirit, I was like, you know, I don't care. I'm like, if they take my blood and they give it to the spiders in here, because the spiders look out for me and protect me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm all about the circle of life. But there gets to a point where I'm just like, I am not here to just be your, like, whatever. And so I asked the mosquito to leave. I asked the mosquito to stop biting me. I said, you know, to spirit, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, I feel like then they deserve to not deserve to die. But like, I look at it like, mm. and you know what else? It'll go back into the earth and they do have my blood and my blood will go in. You know what I mean? It's like, even those little specks of my blood will go back into the earth and back into the circle of life. Also, I saw the number 42 and I feel like that's someone a that's someone's age here and you're really going through it. You're going through the change. I feel like you're in perimenopause. Um, oh man, I feel you. I went through, um, so much like basically I feel like it's interesting to me because now that I'm 52 I've been through all these different stages and phases and I feel like as a woman as a female who bleeds speaking of blood and the mosquito um who you know we have our moon it's like we're so connected to the moon cycles and so that could be for you too like this could be like something that's going on with you and your moon and for those of you who are male identified here thank you for being mature enough to understand that the female avatar here you know has a period has a moon but it is interesting right how we go through this the cycles and so I'm, I feel like that's what's happening. It could even be that that, cause that mosquito, um, the mosquito last night, the one that I got, the first one that I got, I actually felt really bad because it was so tiny and I was like, Oh, you're a baby. And I felt horrible. I really did. I was like, Oh, that sucks. But then there was another one that I caught and released. And it was really crazy because when I opened up the screen, to let him out. There was another mosquito there and I swear they were like hovering and then the two came together and they flew away. And I swear it's almost as if I heard, yeah, he didn't make it or whatever. But, and they're like, well, you know, <laughs> it was almost like they were its parents. And at first they were sad. They're like, oh no, like Johnny didn't make it, you know? Um, or what I guess it would be a girl cause she was biting me, right? Like, you know, <laughs> well, Johnny could be a girl. 
But it was just like this weird, interesting thing that happened. And I realized how connected I really am to nature and how connected I am to the cycles and like, you know, and, and, and that our blood does mean something and keeping our blood clean, keeping our, you know, mosquitoes, they, they have us terrified of them because they're like, you know, oh, this can happen, that can happen. They're like, oh, but this is rare and that's rare. I actually knew someone, like actually knew someone who was, had a great life. Everything was great. They went out hunting one day and they got bit by a mosquito and they got uh, meningitis I believe that turned into like all these things and now they have like all these um, neurological you know deficiencies and just like a really really rough they like literally it changed their life forever so I know that it can happen because that happened to them but I also feel like for whatever reason that is what they planned on and I know it sounds crazy to think that like we've decided or that's it's like but we have decided we did this was all like we laid this all out down to these silly moments that it's like oh it's a mosquito but like right now right I'm like oh like after this I'm gonna have to go put some oils on because I'm like I can I can feel them I felt them all around me and I'm like I'm not lunch buddy like and I have so much oils on me that's why I was like, I knew that it was meant for, like, they gave their life. So thank you, Mosquito, for giving your life for this story, for this analogy. But also for me to show you, like, I did feel remorse for the baby. I did feel remorse that, you know, and then that's why I let the second one out. I tried, well, actually, I tried to catch the first one with a pillow. I tried to do a pillow against pillow just to kind of knock them out and, like, put them outside just to, like, you know, because they were zipping around and being all quick. But they died. And so that was, you know, I was like, ah, oh, shit. So then when the second was, so then I felt like there was another one here. I went around with my flashlight for a long time looking for them before I went to bed because I didn't want to deal with that. But I also had a situation many, many moons ago where um, I was with a friend of mine and we were staying at this uh, guy's house and long story short, it was super haunted. And it, the whole entire time we were there, it was like, holy shit. And she's super witchy like me. And so wherever two or more gather and like, I felt like I was being attacked. We felt like we were being attacked and infested with mosquitoes. She heard it too. We were like, what the fuck? I'm like, dude, they sound like the size of like a pickup truck. She's like, I know. Um, it was like the weirdest thing. And then we woke up in the morning and like, we didn't have any bites and like nothing happened. And we were like, was that all fake? And there was like no mosquitoes in the house, but we both grew up in the Midwest and like, we you know, grew up in the same town and like mosquitoes were really horrible where we grew up. It was really humid and everything. And anyway, it was just this weird thing. And I just, now looking back on it, I realized like how much even then, like the mosquitoes were teaching us fear and not to be afraid. Last night I like sweat my ass off underneath my blanket because I could, no matter what I did, I put stuff all around my bed. I put stuff, you know, like it didn't matter. I could still hear them buzzing around. So I was like underneath my covers and I woke up this morning and I was like, but I felt like I kind of sweated out like whatever it was that I needed to do. So don't turn away from like, you know, these odd experiences or 4707 or, you know what I mean? Like this is what the great spirit is trying to tell you is like, you know, you need to believe in yourself and believe in your own divine gifts and your connection to the great spirit and asking, you know, the ego to share its spirit medicine with you um, when you need it. So here are more messages. I don't know. I don't, you know, what's interesting. I don't have any cards with the mosquito. So I feel like this is like a message within a message. So seriously, please seek out your own mosquito spirit medicine. Maybe you have your own story or maybe now you'll look back on it. I mean, I've had so many stories with so many spirit animals, moths, like things where I'm like, Oh, that's what that meant. Or, you know what I mean? Okay. So drink more water, stay hydrated. Um, that's shungite. That's a shungite stone inside my water that you hear uh, mixing around there. You may want to get yourself some shungite that help cleans out. It keeps your um, your system strong, your blood strong. It could be that some of you are having issues with your blood. I mean, it, honestly, it could be a lot of different things that we're speaking of the mosquito. That's why I'm saying these are just my own personal, you know, you have your own story, your own, you know, medicine. So it says eagle spirit. Ego medicine is the power of the great spirit, the connection to the divine. It is the ability to live in the realm of spirit and yet remain connected and balanced within the realm of earth. And look at that. 
we had that um, earlier with the 1903 and it coming down to the base of the four. Also, if you were drawn to the flamingo, the flamingo was on page 40. And I thought that was interesting because it's about being grounded, right? Like it's a bird, but it's a grounded bird. So you may want to seek out that medicine as well. If you're called to it, if not, it's not your medicine. No worries. When you're done with this, move on, you know? Okay. So it says it is it says the ego has the ability to live in the realm of spirit and yet remain connected and balanced within the realm of earth. Ego soars and is quick to observe expansiveness within the overall pattern of life. From the heights of the clouds, eagle is close to the heavens where the great spirit dwells. The feathers of eagle are considered to be the most sacred of healing tools. They have been used for centuries by shamans to cleanse the auras of patients coming to them for healing. Within the belief systems of Native American tribes, eagle represents a state of grace achieved through hard work, understanding, and a completion of the tests of initiation, which result in the taking of one's personal power. It is only through the trial of experiencing the lows in life as well as the highs, and through the trial of trusting one's connection to the Great Spirit, that the right to use the essence of eagle medicine is earned. Wow. If you have pulled this symbol, Eagle is reminding you to take heart and gather your courage, for the universe is presenting you with an opportunity to soar above the mundane levels of your life. The power of recognizing this opportunity may come in the form of a spiritual test. And being astute, you may recognize the places within your soul, personality, emotions, or psyche that need bolstering or refinement. By looking at the overall tapestry, Eagle teaches you to broaden your sense of self beyond the horizon of what is presently visible. And I have to go back to my issue with Baba last night, my familiar. And I knew it like, it's like sometimes I'm in it and I'm, and I hear myself yelling at her and it's like, and I know that's like programming. My family were a bunch of yellers and put her downers and made you feel small and stupid and bully. There was so much bullying when I was growing up. Ooh, it was 556 and it's five semicolon, you know, cause it's 50. So it's like five zero semicolon 56. So I feel like five is about change and transformation. Zero is about us being like great spirit, right? Like being like the fool in the tarot that we're like going through all these dimension, dimensions and times, 51, 15, um, which is also six, six, which is also 12, which is also three. Ah! It could go on and on and on infinity right um but the 56 is the 11 and great spirit and they're showing us like that's the angels right like it's like the ego is just another form of like an angel looking out for us showing us i mean you know the hawk came to me the other day and you know when this great eagle came to me in the clouds today i mean it was it, i mean I, I really wanted to get my camera because it was so crazy it didn't look like any of the other clouds i mean it was so obvious it was an eagle and i was just like is everybody else seeing this or is just this <laughs> it's just me you know but I'm hearing like there's something about a redo. I feel like for some of you, like you're like you want to redo or you feel like you need a redo and spirits like don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone and do the redo, right? Because it says the eagle teaches you to broaden your sense of self beyond the horizon of what is presently visible. So don't imagine yourself of where you are in like if you're in an uncomfortable situation right now, I know I am. I'm in an uncomfortable situation. I don't like living like this. That's why I took my anger out on her because I was like, I was, I was, I'm like, man, I just want to go to bed. Why does it have to happen right now? Really, dude? I'm like, it started like that where I was like, dude, what are you doing? And then I was like, stop, stop. And then she was like, oh no. And then it was just like, we had this moment. And then, and then afterwards when I was still bitching, she was like, meow, 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 meow. And she was bitching back at me like, bitch, I'm sorry. Like I fucking like, I was stoned. Like you've never made a mistake. And it, and it's only because of like, it was like going into other things. And you know what I mean? It was just, it was because I don't have a washer and dryer and I live off grid. And I was like, motherfucker, like. It's, you know, but the interesting thing is recently spirit had me switch bags and I had my, cause I have my laundry next to her litter box, you know, but they had me switch bags to like an Ikea bag, like one of those plastic kind of like, you know, bags. And so I was like, oh gosh, at least it didn't get on the clothes. But still I was like, you know, I was like, I had to take everything out. And I was like, dude, it's like 1130 at night. Like, you know, I, I have no like lights and whatever but still but I bitched and I was I was so mad at her when I'm like I'm the one that can get me out of this situation I'm the one working on getting myself out of the situation but I'm at the end of my rope right I'm like I'm like fuck I'm at the end of my rope but this is when we're being tested 
And I know it sucks. And that's why I went outside and gave the finger to spirit because I was like, I'm like, what kind of tests are these though? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, really? I'm like, but that's, what is that? That's like, that's because if anything, it, why wasn't I like, oh honey, I'm so sorry. It's like, instead I made her feel bad. I made her feel guilty. And who did that? My family, my friends. I grew up in the Midwest and it was like, we were fucking sorry for everything. We were raised and born and bred to like, you know, that have like, if you took care of yourself, you're selfish. If you were, you know what I mean? I'd go on and on and on. And every time I think I've crossed the hurdle and I'm in this like place of like love and light and everything, right? Then something like that happens. And all it does is prove to me that I'm not fucking there yet. <laughs> and I still have to, and I laugh because it's the human side that's like, all right, game on, you know, like game on Wayne's world, like game on, like, let's do this. So when it, when it happens, your whenever your situation happens, like mine did, they're saying like, how are you going to work through it? When your roommate comes home and they're, you know, irritating you or upsetting you, or whatever, are you going to be given the cold shoulder and run in your room? Are you going to, you know what I mean? Like, how are you going to handle it? I don't know why that came up, but so it's like, what, or your boss, like your boss is coming to you. It's like, but if you're the one that's at the job and you're fucking miserable, it's like, they're just, there doing their job and maybe they're miserable too, but it doesn't help. Right. So she had an accident. I mean, I've had her for 11 and a half years. And for most of the time, she's been a dream animal and she's so self-sufficient. But in the last year, I realized like, I can't leave her alone for long periods of time anymore. I can't, you know, and I've been frustrated with that because I'm like, man, I just want to go on vacation. And I'm like, and then I hear it, get a, you know, a pet sitter or someone to sit with her. And it's just all these things, right? It's like, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Like all of these things that are happening. And I know that if it's happening for me and they're having me share my story that I know it's happening for you too. So all you need to do is just like take out my story and in place in yours. And so they're asking us like great spirit Eagle is asking us, how are we going to show up in these moments? And how long are we going to let them linger? Right? So the next part of the medicine says, in learning to fiercely attack your personal personal in learning to fiercely attack your personal fear of the unknown the wings of your soul will be supported by the ever present breezes which are the breath of the great spirit so like the wind beneath my wings kind of thing right like they're saying like ride like soar on the wings of, of you know on of angels but also in this situation it's the eagle so the eagle is like saying call on me so when you're having a moment where you're about to lose your shit Thank you. I need this medicine too. call on the eagle and say, you know, help me to rise above this. Give me, give me the patience. Give me the love. Give me whatever it is. you Give me the compassion, whatever it is you need in that moment. It says feed your body, but more importantly, feed your soul within the realm of mother earth and father sky. The dance that leads to flight involves the conquering of fear and the willingness to join in the adventure that you are co-creating with the divine, right? Like I did that to myself, even though I don't want to fucking hear that. I know that I did. So I can get mad and get mad and get mad and get mad and get mad, but it did nothing but upset her and upset me. And then we wound down and then I apologized and I, we hugged it out and, you know, and I just was like, can you be more careful? And she was like, yeah, you know, but I realized like maybe I need to change things for her because she's not the same cat and she may need different things now. So maybe the people in your life need different things. Maybe you need different things. So it says, if Eagle has majestically soared into your reading today. You're being put on notice to reconnect with the element of air. Air is of the mental plane, and in this instance, it is of the higher mind. Wisdom comes in many strange and curious forms and is always related to the creative force of the great spirit. If you've been walking in the shadows of former realities, ha ha, ego brings illumination. Ego teaches you to look higher and to touch grandfather's son with your heart to love the shadow as well as the light and see the beauty in both and you will take flight like the eagle. Eagle medicine is the gift we give ourselves to remind us of the freedom of the skies. Eagle asks you to give yourself permission to legalize freedom and to follow the joy your heart desires. So interesting. I'm sorry. I'm, I really am not making this about myself today, but um, 
I have been asking spirit, like, what's my next move? Like what, you know, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm missing something, you know, blah, blah, blah. So when I was looking for a sticker to put over this, right, because I didn't want to just, I wanted to make sure that this was a secure environment, this podcast type reading, and I didn't want the distract you, like if something fell off. So I'll, I'm, I remember one time my friend was like, you know, you should keep it, or no, when my friend gave me, or gifted me this, she had a sticker on the camera and I said, what is that for? And she's like, I don't know. I just think it's, you know, she's like, I just don't like that. You know, people can come into your, when you have it on. And I was like, oh shit, dude. I'm like, I guess I never thought about that. And she's like, yeah. Also, when I look down, it's 9.59 exactly, so I don't know if that means something for somebody. Um, but when I was looking for these stickers, I found my passport, my uh, birth certificate, and my social security card. And I was wondering where they were because I really need to, I really want to get my driver's license again. And I was like, if anything, I at least want to like redo, re-up my passport, you know, um, because I'm right on the border of Canada. I'm like, fuck, like, why am I not like going there? I mean, I can literally like take a boat across the water and like be in Canada. And, um, and so I've been like looking for, you know, a sign and I go in this bag that had like all my spirit stuff and stickers and and it was in there. And I was like, why did I have that in my spirit bag? I was wondering where that was. And I was like, and it was, I swear to you with all that is holy, I was like, freedom, baby. I literally like looked at my old passport and I'm like, fuck, I can't believe I even let, let you get expired. So I was like, I'm renewing my passport. I'm like, I am renewing my passport. And I got really, really excited about it. So I feel like for you guys, it's kind of like the same thing. It's like, I feel like what is hidden from you or what's been hidden from you? And if you don't know, say, Spirit, is there something I'm not seeing? Because I was, I didn't, I kept trying to get my driver's license. And yes, I want my driver's license, but I felt like um, I've been seeing all these things, you know, with the Paris Olympics. And I was just thinking how much I miss Paris and how much I miss Europe and, you know, all these things. And interestingly enough, you know what I mean? It's like when you're not looking for something, it's like something shows up. And all I have to do is I, my, my ID card expired. It's not that big of a deal. I can take a bus to the court courthouse today and get a new one. I have enough to, you know what I mean? Like I could just renew it. It's not a big deal. But I was like, no, I feel like um, there's something more. So tap into that. When I keep looking down, I keep seeing like 110 or like 111 or, you know what I mean, on the with the numbers here. So there's definitely, oh, and even I just looked down, it was 1001 and then it turned to 1002. So there's definitely like spirit saying, follow the breadcrumbs, follow the spirit numbers, follow all that. Also, um, I put my phone in military time so that I can get things like 2255, which is 1055, but 2255. And then I know that like spirit speaking to me, sometimes Sometimes you need a message, right? And you're like, I need a message spirit. And then all of a sudden you look at your clock and it's like, you know, 2354. And it's like, that's almost midnight. But it's like, you wouldn't, you know, if you didn't have that on your phone or on your thing, you wouldn't get those downloads or you might, but you might get in a different way. Anyway, that's just to put out there. So because these medicine cards also have a contrary, I like to read that as well. And the contrary says, if you have pulled eagle in reverse, you have forgotten your power and connectedness to the great spirit. You may have failed to recognize the light that is always available for those who seek illumination. Heal your broken wings with love. Loving yourself as you are loved by the great spirit is the lesson which the contrary eagle brings. On some level, Eagle is telling you to seek higher ground in which to build your nest. The nest is the home of the heart and cannot remain in a swamp. If your nest is in a swamp, this may be connected to your belief that your wings are clipped by an impossibility in your present status. Eagle's nest is high in the mountains where the air is clean and the movement is free. It may be your time for a vision quest so that you may commune with the Great Spirit. Fasting and praying will surely bring an answer. Seek lofty ideals and illumination will be close at hand. Yes, I have had some of my biggest breakthroughs on doing uh, fasting. I think the longest I've ever gone was 36 hours and it was, holy shit. I was doing the automatic writing in my, in my notebook. It really, it really is something, but make sure you hydrate yourself. And you know, for some of you, you can um, do celery water. You can do um, 
like you just don't want to do anything with sugars to like spike your energy but like things that are filled with nutrients like like make sure you get organic celery or you know where it's coming from that has no pesticides or chemicals and then um clean it really 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 good like really even if you want to like you know scrub it but clean the celery really well um unless you know the soil since the dirt's not going to hurt you but i'm just saying you know either way um but I would clean the celery really well and then soak it in really good water as well. Same, you know, thought processes, make sure it's healthy and clean and soak that celery water for like a day or two. You know, it's good to keep your celery in water too. It lasts longer. Um, and then like you see the ends starting to get a little like watery. I just kind of chop them off so they don't like kind of infect the rest of the celery or take it off and, and eat it. Um, but drink you can keep that celery water in a jar and that will help you feel like you know uh, you could do lemon water any type of detoxification um the zendocrine you could do like a zendocrine you know water like you, but that's a whole different cleanse i just got the chill spirit said that's really good but that's a whole different cleanse and i don't know if you're meant to take the zendocrine in, but i think so because i think they're tablets and i think they're plant-based i'm almost positive I think they're just nutrients derived out of plants, I believe, but I don't know for sure. Um, and they're not having me because I was like, I can look online or I can, but they want you to look that up yourself. So anyway, so that is your mess message from the Eagle Spirit. And thank you for hanging in there and listening to my stories as well, because they are here. I'm here, right? I, a lot of times I go through things first so that uh, you can learn and heal and grow from that information and that medicine as well. Okay, so um, I will see you when I see you. I love you and um, take good care of yourselves and each other, okay? And reach out any other, any of these, anything we spoke about. Okay, any of the spirit animals that and animals we spoke about, any of the spirit animals that we spoke about are um, de definitely deeper, seek them out. And I'm hearing for any of you who want to work with me or contribute to any of the work on this channel, all of the information is in the description box and in the comments. And we are always excited to get new decks. So if there are any new decks in the Amazon wish list that you're called to donate to the tribe, we will do a video all around it just for you and honor you um, and for with gratitude. And we will do a little reading um, with that and you'll get a little side reading um, on the side as well. Okay. All right. Love you so much. See you next time and take good care of yourselves and each other. Blessed be at home. Bye. Welcome reading two. So if my eyes are not deceiving me, it looked like we started at 10612, which is very interesting. So you can interpret that any way you want, but six and 12, well, 12 was coming up a lot in the last um, reading. So if you were drawn to reading one, you may want to go over there and check it out. Um, but also it's number 10. It's about completion. So, um, you know, the, what is our theme? I'm like, hold on, hold the phone. I think it's which bird is guiding you, right? Oh my gosh, you guys were in August. Welcome. It's August 2nd, 2024. Wow. So what's today, by the way? So August 2nd, 2024. So 2024 is 8. August is 8. That's 16 uh, plus the 2nd, 16, 18. Ooh, is the number 9. Interesting. So maybe you feel like you're at a 9, but I think you're at a 10 or maybe a week from now at the Lionsgate portal um, on the next Thursday on the 8th. I feel like there's going to be something really, really magical that's going to happen um, for you. <coughs> Actually, the whole moon, the whole moon, <laughs> the whole month of August is on fire. Seriously. And I feel like I just, I'm in my house, but I feel like Taylor Swift right now. Like, I feel like I just ate a bug. <laughs> It's so interesting because in reading when we were talking about mosquitoes. So if you're drawn to that, uh, definitely go check it out. There was a lot of good medicine in there. But I'm easing into your reading and I'm feeling this really cool energy because I thought we were going to the owl reading was going to be the second one. But then when I started doing the research for this, I realized that the owl reading was going to be a reading within a reading. And I think that was the bonus surprise that I didn't understand they were trying to say. So with that being said, if you were drawn to the owl, um, there's going going blah, 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 blah. there is going to be more than one message in there so yeah I don't know if they'll have me do timestamps within it but I just have a feeling that the owl in my mind it went from it was going to be eagle owl bat then it was eagle owl uh flamingo and then I was like and bat so the bat is coming up so I don't know who that's for I think you know 
if if you're drawn to it, look up the spirit medicine. But otherwise, if it's not your medicine, don't make it your medicine. Uh, but interesting. But if you were drawn to the owl, uh, there's going to be messages within a message. So I, you're the mystery. I'm actually really excited because you're the only one that I have no idea what your bird is because when I started this and spirit said, which bird is guiding you? Um, and I kept hearing now too. So it's like, kind of like right now, like which bird is guiding you now? So you may like owls. Like I just heard this, but just because you like owls, don't just like make it your medicine, right? Like if you're drawn to this, you're drawn to this for a reason. Um, but it could be that you're drawn to the owl one because you're drawn to owls. You know what I mean? It's hard to say it's, it's, there's so many of you and it's so different. Also, I hope you're liking this kind of podcast format. I've actually wanted to do this, uh, for a very long time. This is how I do my readings. Like, um, if, if we do a reading one-on-one -on -one over the phone, it would be like this unless we agreed to do a zoom or something like that. Um, but if you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, my email address is magicalmedium at gmail.com and it's in the description box. All of my information, all the contribution information, I have my Amazon back up and running if you want to donate any decks to the tribe. Um, we do really cool stuff with that as well where um, if you donate a, a deck to the tribe, unless you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous, but if you uh, don't want to be anonymous, then I say your name and thank you and we do like an opening we do like a fun video for that and then we'll do a quick reading and I give you like a little private reading there as well uh, for donating it okay so that's always kind of fun <laughs> and uh, and also I'm thinking about doing a giveaway I've been thinking about doing a giveaway so uh, stay tuned for that you might want to make sure that you are subscribed and check out the community section because I'll be doing the giveaway information there um, I'm not sure when, but I have a feeling that they're going to have me, um, it's time for some of my decks to move on. I can feel that. And so, um, so stay tuned for that. I don't know when that's going to be, but stay tuned. And yeah, so very interesting, but yeah. So if you want to book one-on-one -on -one time with me, or if you want to get a recorded reading, thank you spirit. Um, I offer recorded readings that I think are, I believe are $50 cheaper. My rates have changed. I did put my rates in the description box and the comments just for some of you who've been walking with me a long time. My rates have changed and the recorded rates have changed as well. But I believe I'm almost hundred percent positive that the recorded rates are $50 below the spirit kind of decided what my rates were. And I can't remember now. Isn't that funny? Cause I didn't, it's, it's what spirit feels is, is the, the, a fair exchange of energy, um, for that. So, um, and don't always feel like you can't watch these readings because prayers are also a donation of energy. You know, I watch readings too, but I don't donate to every single person. Some people I do, some people I don't. Um, I've never been drawn to buy a deck for a reader so far, but it doesn't mean I won't. And I like candles. I say prayers, you know, every time I do the reading, um, I thank them and thank their higher selves and all that kind of stuff. So the gratitude's super important right now and putting stuff out there is really good right now. Don't hoard your stuff. Like, you know, don't hoard it, you know, like don't be in that energy spirits, like give it away, give it away. The more you give it away, the more it comes back to you. It's true. It's really, really, really true. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Remember that song? Um, okay, you guys are like wacky and fun. I love you. I'm feeling this really super cool, fun energy. But yeah, so when this, so this is evolved and it's literally evolving as I'm creating it. And they asked me to do it in this format. One, to kind of show you what it'd be like if we did a phone, like one-on-one. -on -one. It's just like me and you. Um, but also, uh, what did you say, Spirit? Oh, and also they wanted me to point out the recorded readings are really fun because it's me, but you get all me. Like I get all nice and gussied up for you and we do a reading and it's an, it's an unlisted link. And so you get to share it with whomever you want to share it with. And it's there forever. I never delete it. It's always there for you to go back and look at and, you know, um, yeah. So is that it? Sphere, is that all you want to say? Yeah, the recorded readings are really fun. They're really nice too because they could be anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours and they really have been. And I've had people who are like, dude, that 20 minutes like gave me everything I needed. I'm like, cool. Cause that's what it's there for. It's just like a, you know, it's like if you went to go see a therapist, right? And you sit in with a session, you just need somebody to bounce some shit off of. That's kind of like what that is, but it's, it's all you, right? Like the whole entire recorded reading is all about you. It's all your energy. 
okay so it's like it's just it's like it's you know basically spirit saying like you know you don't have to interact with me but some of you you know miss me or whatever and you want to interact with me or some of you have never met me and you want to like interact with me and get to know me um on a more personal level i get that that's cool and i do do um i do do <laughs> Um, there are options of doing one-on-one, -on -one, like ongoing teachings, but I'm still working with that with spirit. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Um, if you're interested in more in-depth classes, let me know. If you have any ideas for readings, for a reading that you would like me to do for the tribe, please feel free to put it in the comments section or you can email me privately and you don't even have to just say, hey, can we do this topic? But don't say I, I said it. And I'll be like, no worries, man. It's all good. Okay. So this was super fun because um, I have the medicine cards, which we have the animals. And I thought for sure we were just going to pull from those. But then I saw the flamingo and I was like, I don't have anything with the flamingo. I'm like, well, I'll research it before. And they're like, yes, you do the bird medicine oracle. And I'm like, oh yeah. So that was really exciting. And the flamingo I'm super excited to work with because I work with them before and I like touched on it a little bit with them today and I'm really excited to work with them. But anyway, with that being said, reading to boop, 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 what is your bird? What bird wants to uh, guide you at this time, spirit? We're calling in the bird or birds. It could be more than one. It could be more than one. I'm knocking the energy out, the old energy, your energy, the energy of the cards. What do we, what do you have for us today, spirit? What do you have for us today, spirit? Oh, ooh, this one pulled out. Wow. It was like really connected to me. Oh, what a pretty bird. So it's, um, I'll describe the bird too. This is, so this is why they wanted to do this as well. Sorry. This is a new thing for me too. So bear with me. You know, I'm, I'm channeling, I'm doing a lot of different things. So I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to all of you, but I'm also speaking to energies and then these animals and birds just have this very like different energy anyway. Um, but I will describe this bird to you. So if you can keep your eyes closed when you're getting these readings, because the whole point of these is to get you like inside of your own mind and your own consciousness and your own connection to the medicine that's being spoken, right? Because it's for mass people, but we all, even if we're all going through similar things, we all have our own story. So this bird is called an avocet and it kind of looks like a seabird. And let me get the book. It's got white legs and it has long skinny white legs, but it's got the bend right at the knee, but more at the top. And they've got like those kind of like beach lofty feet. They have a very seagull look about them. They're white, but they have a black head and a black beak and they have black stripes on their wings. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna really, now they're showing the, okay, now I see the picture of them like with their wings open. Okay, so with their, when they're on the ground, I really just see white, you know, because I see their white skinny feet and their white lofty big body. And then they have a black head and black um, beak and they have black stripes, but they're only at the top of their wing, the bottom of their wing. And it looks like their tail, but it's not. Okay. So, <sighs> sorry, I wouldn't win at Pictionary. I'm doing my best here. Okay, so, but when their wings are spread open, it looks like they have angel wings on their back. And there's black stripes going down, like, where you'd think their, like, angel wings would be. And then there's, like, black, almost, like, dew drop, like, ink stains on, like, not really quite the middle. I'll put picture. I'll take pictures of, of the cards that are pulled and I'll put them in the community section so you can see it and really connect to this bird. Okay. Um, but I almost am hoping that you're watching this first before you do that. In fact, I think I'll probably wait a minute before I put in. That's why sometimes if I do these readings for you guys and then I say I'm going to post something in the community but I don't post it right away. Sometimes I do forget or I'm tired but other times it's purposeful. It's because they want you to like marinate on that medicine and then when you see the imagery you like kind of see what else it brings you. Because if you are here you are a powerful light worker and you have a lot of gifts and spirit wants you to start seeing things without seeing them. Right? So you know that's why I've been you know 
so bold to say, can you close your eyes when you're watching these readings, right? Because there's nothing really for you to look at anyway. And it's interesting because I have a sticker in front of the camera, but when I, but I noticed, and you can look later, you don't have to open your eyes now, but maybe you've seen it already. But on the screen, there's like this white light going through it. And it's kind of interesting. And I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but it's a cat in the hat sticker is on my thing. And I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but it almost looks like a bird in flight. It's very interesting. Um, okay. So, um, but at the very tip of the wings is black. So they're very magical looking. They're very interesting and they are all different though. Like you can tell even the artists, the way they painted them, wanted to make sure that they all looked a little different. Some have more black on their tips of their wings. Some don't, you know what I mean? Some, this one, just the way that he's flying, it looks like he's got like three like stripes going down his back, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's like all an illusion. And I feel like I'm excited to get into this book basically. So the, the words underneath it are devotion overcomes setbacks. So, and it's also on page 54, which is the number nine. Oh, and we just said that it's a nine. Interesting. Okay. So I said nine meant something and that's for you. 54 is so nine. But also when it was paused, I felt this like finished, like you're done. Like, like you, you think you're in the nine, but you're actually really done. You're just lingering in the nine. And this says Avocet, so elegant and refined, dressed in, dressed in black and white, wades on long legs along the muddy food rich shorelines that she so often makes her home. And it is here on sea's unforgiving margins that Avocet makes her nest a shallow indention, indentation, excuse me, a shallow indentation lined with the leaves of marshy plants, stems, and roots. Sea, indifferent to the cares of Avocet, sends surge tides, gales, and floods. Many might abandon nest and hope, but not Avocet. She remains devoted. Even when sea's waves have lapped at her nest for hour upon long hour, and if sea should sweep her nest away, she simply builds another. Steadfast Avocet believes in the future of her chicks and counsels that you too remain steadfast. If you love, love deeply. If you believe in a cause, support it wholeheartedly vociferously, no matter what or who opposes you, then, like Avocet, you will overcome all setbacks. Oh my gosh, you guys! Oh, it's so powerful! Oh my gosh, like just the analogy of that. I mean, I got so much there for myself too, because I feel like we get something from each of these, you know. Sometimes it really is just one reading is your medicine and that's it, you know, because if you go too far into reading, uh, you know, all the readings, like if you don't, if you, if you don't have the, the power yet to discern what medicine is for you and what is not for you, it's not advantageous to watch several readings. There are some of us in this tribe that watch all of the readings. Well, these are people who have been working for years at this practice. They know that whatever is their medicine is their medicine. So I felt like I should really call this out because sometimes when I say that people are like, oh yeah, I want to hear that too. It's like, but there's a, the topic of discernment is very, very prevalent on earth right now because we've been in this give me give me grabby grabby let me take it maybe i'll use it maybe i won't this hoarding of energy people places things it's about unburdening ourselves from the hoarding energy and you're going to change from moment to moment and day to day right now the planet in itself is going through a metamorphosis. So, of course, every living being on it that survives because of it is also going through a metamorphosis. I just watched a reading the other day. I was called to two readings. There was four, and I was called to three and four of the readings, but I was called to four first. I watched four first, and at the end, or at one point in there, she was like, oh my gosh, she's like, I cannot believe I did. She, was, she had four different decks, but every deck pulled the same card in that deck, 
which was manifest, uh, which was um, transformation and metamorphosis. And and I and I wasn't surprised by that because I'm like, yeah, because every single solitary thing is. I mean, I'm watching it with my familiar. I've been talking about it a lot and sharing her story a lot. And, um, you know, I spoke about it at the, you know, beginning with the messages from spirit and the update, you know, energy update, and then reading one as well, analogy of something she went through, came through again. And it's just, there's, because we're all going through something. I mean, I can't even be around other people for very long these days, like literally not for very long. And I get really um, agitated really quickly. I'm fine if the energy is good, but if it even flusters, I'm like, but you know what? That's a lesson. We are being triggered right now to work and, and grow past it. They're not saying that we shouldn't have emotions or that we shouldn't love or we shouldn't care. or We shouldn't, you know, it's like, but they're saying you can love something, but you can leave it too. I mean, this is going to sound so gross and offensive, but they want you to hear this. So take a drink of water before you hear this. Cause I'm like, what this is like the worst, most gross analogy. You can take a shit and you can admire it all day long. You could have had the Picasso of shits. And you could be like, oh my gosh, look at how much my body is purging right now or whatever, right? But it's still at the end of the day, excrement. And it's going to it's gonna fester and get gross and it needs to be disposed of like a dead body. These are all gross analogies, but they're true because it's not like, it's it's almost as if we're still carrying it around. This has been coming up a lot. So it didn't come up in the other, in the beginning reading or reading one, but it's coming up here. So obviously this message is for somebody. Um, but it is really, truly like, it's like you're saying goodbye. I mean, I said to spirit today, I'm like, do I really need to get rid of? Cause I have some old pictures of like my grandmother and like certain family members and, you know, friends and stuff. And I even have two pictures of an old partner who I miss dearly. And I it's not even really the romantic relationship so much as just like the relationship that I had with them, like as a person and they're really good pictures of them. And I was like, should I hold on to these? Should I hold? And I still haven't gotten rid of them. And I, I don't know what's going on. It's like, there's just like this last, I don't know if and when I'm going to do it, but I know for me that that message resonates for me because I love them deeply, but I'm like, I feel like, I'm I, like, what's the point of having, basically they're showing me like, what's the point of me having these pictures like in a box? Like I put all of these memories and these people in a box up on a shelf somewhere in my house or putting them in frames and keeping them all around me. It's like, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have their pictures in frames right now because I'd be constantly triggered thinking about this relationship or that day, or maybe that happened or you know what I mean? So I feel like this is a lesson for all of us. I'm taking this too, and I'm going to do my very best to, to just purge myself of this thing because the truth is they're just snapshots of a memory. And even the stuff with my grandmother, I was like, cause they're my grandma's old pictures. My grandmother, like I had pictures of my grandmother, like her trips and her vacations and stuff. And nobody really wanted them. And I don't know why, but I was like, I want them. And I, and I would every so often when I would feel low or whatever, I would love to pick one up and see the year and the, you know, time that my grandmother did that. And I was like, Oh my grandma, she went to Canada. She went to Niagara Falls. I'm like, that's so cool. You know what I mean? Um, I'm like, Oh, she took this picture. I'm like, Oh, I didn't know my grandma and I were both in Philadelphia. I'm like, how did I not know that? Or how did we not talk about that? Or, you know, but at the same time, I do know about those pictures now and they were my grandmother's memories and they were her experiences. And do I really need those pictures? Not really. I, you know what I mean? So they're really urging us to let go of things. And if you're, if you're like, the only thing I was saying is I, I said this to my husband, I said there, I go, I know for a fact, I have some pictures that nobody in my family has, but me, I know, I know that I know that because the person told me that, that they were like, Oh, I didn't even know that. I'm like, Oh yeah, I got them from grandma and nobody wanted them. And I kept them. 
And so there's this part of me that's like, what do I do? What do I do? And then my partner was like, you know, mail them to him. Or we had a conversation and alluded to, I was like, I guess I can mail them, you know? And so I've been thinking about that. I'm like, do I want to mail this? Do I not want to mail this? And so when I get to that bridge, I will cross it. But maybe this is, I'm sharing my stories with you. So it's the same, you know, like maybe you just need to put them in a box and slap a stamp on them and send them to somebody else. And be like, if you don't want these, toss them. But I was going to toss them, you know, I don't need them. Right? And you don't have to explain yourself. I mean, it's kind of a form of therapy, you know. Oh, it is a form of therapy, but it's almost a, I meant to say it's almost a form of shock therapy. You know, because like, yeah, like why? And, and, and even so, even so, there are records now everywhere. And you can, I mean, like right now, I could probably find a picture of my grandmother when she was in grade school because somebody probably uploaded stuff from, you know what I mean? It's just, it's like, what does it mean? Now that we're converging these worlds, it's like, what does it mean to you? So you have to ask yourself, what are you remaining devoted to? Are you demoting, devote, demoting? Are you devoting yourself to a nest that is happy and creative and full of love? I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little, the reason why I'm pausing is because speaking of nests, we've been having issues with the, with the ants around here. And, uh, I had to do some clearing out yesterday and I forgot to cover this one thing and all of a sudden I'm like, oh crap, I think I hear them coming in, <laughs> but that's okay. Maybe that's for you. That's your medicine. Look up ant spirit medicine. Cause I, I can really hear them. It's kind of tripping me out. Can you hear them? Hold on. Oh no, that was from around the corner. But anyway, but do you hear what they're saying to you? Yeah, work with the ant spirit medicine. And the ant spirit medicine has so many different versions. So just, you know, whichever one calls out to you. Um, but speaking of nests, like these ants were building these nests here. And I just kept spraying and spraying and spraying. I don't want to kill them, but I was spraying it with peppermint and different, you know, scents and things like that that they don't like to get them to leave. And then they left and it was good. And then I thought things were good, but they came back because I had to keep at it. I have to keep at it. Same with the last uh, reading. We were talking about mosquitoes. I'm like, oh, but I'm like, I just sprayed, but we had rain and we have, I'm like, so I have to spray again. I have to do all these things again. And sometimes being human can feel like a repetitive merry-go-round shit show of like, why do I have to keep doing this over and over and over and over? It's like, well, it depends, you know, maybe like for me, I know like this is temporary. I'm not meant to live here, right? Like I'm only living here for a short time. So I try to remind, so I, I try to remind myself like that kind of stuff or, you know, my animal, you know, having another hairball and I'm like, I just cleaned the floor, right? Like this just happened again. You know what I mean? And it's like, she won't go on, you know, this, she'll go, she'll go. I'm like, go on the wood or I'm like, go on this above. I'm like, or go on the rug. I'm like, not on my bed, you know, whatever. And it's like, ah, oh, I'm like, I got to clean it up again. But I chose to have this animal. I chose to have an animal that, you know, has hairballs. We take so many victim roads out of our own lives because it's easier. But if we want something, really want something, the Avocet is saying, you have to work hard for it. It's not going to come easy. And for a lot of us, we've gotten very comfortable. It's Friday and it's summertime. I <laughs> I live in a very busy touristy town, so um, it's going to get worse probably as the day goes on. Um, you know, but the Avocet is coming to you for a reason. I mean, all the other ones I knew, and this was the only one that like, it was a surprise. And I think it was for, I feel like it's my medicine too. That's why I'm like, I'm getting all these aha moments. I feel like it's like, there's a, there's a message in here for all of us. 
right? Because if you believe in a cause, you support it wholeheartedly, vociferously, no matter what or who opposes you. If you want to do something, do it. And keep working at it. Keep building the nest for it. I keep seeing all these numbers. 133.11, 113.31, 113.13. Like, I keep seeing numbers over and over and over. And I feel like this is Spirit saying to you, like, they are calling to you. They are calling to you. They are calling to you. They have been calling to you. And for some of you, definitely go check out the owl reading because it is going to be a reading within a reading. Because I have, I'm not going to tell you how many, but there are, uh, there's more than one owl medicine. There's different owls in this book. And because um, I was like, oh, I was like, shouldn't we? Blah. And they were like, no. And I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but there's definitely one that's talking to me right now. Okay, so with that being said, they said, be like the Avocet and you will overcome all setbacks. So when you're having a setback, if you haven't seen The Point of No Return, I never did mind the little things. With Jane Fonda, please do yourself a favor and research it and watch it. The Point of No Return with Jane Fonda. It's it's harsh in a lot of parts for our empaths, but there's a lot of good lessons in there. And I know there, it's like murder, mayhem, whatever, but it's also about the building of a warrior. And if you look at like her journey as that, like the building of a warrior, then I think it'll be you know easier for you to like watch and handle. Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of new movies on... Um, on YouTube. It's August. They always have new movies. You would not believe how many cool movies are on YouTube right now. Oh, for August. The whole entire series that, well, I don't know if the whole entire series, but I saw three so far of Jurassic Park and I don't know which years or which whatever, but I definitely started watching the original because I'm like, I am going to watch. I'm like, so I was like, I need something to, I'm like, I want to focus on my spirit medicine and I want to focus on like my creativity because we're coming to the end of Whenever you watch this, it's timeless, of course, but we're right now, August 2nd, 2024, we are at the end of the Cancer Moon Cycle. We are gearing up for the new moon in Leo in a few days, and then Mercury is going to be full retrograde right after that, and then we're going to have the Lion's Gate, Dragon's Gate portal um, on the 8th right after that, which is a triple eight, 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 eight. Oh, well, that was four eights, I think, but you hear what I'm saying, right? So there's a lot of magic happening. So, um... You know, this is the time to, you know, spend a lot of time by yourself, but, you know, read things, watch things, observe things. Like if you're somebody who gets inspired by going to the park and watching people, children, animals, you know what I mean? Like whatever, like you'd like to watch joy, you know, you go to the park to see joyfulness, right? People are playing and having a good time, leisure, go there, bring your book, bring your stuff, like put your headphones on. If you don't want to hear them, maybe you just want to watch them and like, and draw, put on music, you know, but I'm hearing like this new moon in Leo is going to be a whole, like from now until the new moon in Scorpio, I'm getting this really powerful, potent energy, you guys like, and it makes sense because, you know, we're new moon in Leo, then we'll be new moon, which is fire, new moon in Virgo, which is earth. And then we'll be new moon in Libra, which is air, and then new moon in Scorpio, which is water. So I feel like in this next phase is where we are going to lay the foundation for all of the magic that is going to come in the following days after. You know, as I've mentioned, this is the year of the dragon, but then next year is the year of the snake. And what does the snake do? It sheds its fucking skin, man. And it's like, I'm outie. I'm look at me, brand new and shiny. And so I feel like 2025 is going to be a super, super fun year. And it's also going to be a nine year which is really rad, right? Because then the year after that will be 20, uh, 26, which will be 10 completion. So I feel like, I feel like if you found yourself at this reading, you're where you're supposed to be. It's just there's, for some of you, it's like there's all different layers, like some of you and different levels, meaning like some of you are just like a hair away from like get, having your aha moment where like the floodgates are going to come in and you're like, holy shit. And like, maybe you've been like trying to write a book and you have like 14 pages and then like between now and like the new moon in Scorpio, which is November 2nd, you're going to fucking write a novel. And it's not even going to be hard because it's going to flow out of you. And nobody says how long it has to be. There are no standards of anything anymore. Art is what you make it. Whether you write it, speak it, sing it, create it into being, cook it into being. I don't, whatever. Art is art. Even a surgeon is an artist, right? You have to be, it's like anybody can hack up a body, but it takes a surgeon to go in and be very, very, very careful and very meticulous 
right? You remember that game operation? It takes a very steady hand. That was the theme of the game when it came out when I was a kid. It takes, because otherwise it's like, Meh. and I feel like that game operation, oh my gosh, I feel like I need to get that into my orbit. And when, when I really need some focus, maybe we can make our own little form of, um, of that I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let's marinate on that like maybe we could do something with that it doesn't have to be so off-putting maybe it could be a chime or something but but something where you know you really have to focus I just did a shorts I don't know when they'll have me post it but a few days ago I did a shorts for focus from um, this really powerful deck and I feel like that is what they want us to be right now is laser focused on our dreams on what we want the Ava set is saying that too and when it fucking happens man if if the nest gets stomped out then you rebuild it and you do it again because the truth is every single time you every time the the nest gets like put out it makes it's you're forced to build a new one speaking of there was a family of birds that was in this tree over here and I was, I felt so blessed that the, that the parents would, they would show me like when they would get food and they're like, watch me feed my babies. And they just, I, I just felt so blessed that they brought me into their world. And so I've been so excited to watch their, their journey, these little birds. And then I prayed for rain and prayed for rain and prayed for rain. And then rain came and it was awesome. But I kept saying only if it's in the greatest and highest good of all. Well, I noticed after the rainstorms, I went to go check on the birds because the tree they were in wasn't super protective. And I was like, oh no, I'm like, I hope they're okay, you know, and I haven't seen them. And then I saw an egg on the, on the ground that had broken, might've been there forever for all I know. I have no idea. I never noticed it because I was always going and looking up. Right. And then, um, like tree started falling off or, uh, the fruit that had ripened on this tree out here, we were shocked. It looked like it was dead. And I was like, I don't even know if it can hold the weight of that fruit that's coming on it. And then I went outside and two of the branches were gone down and the fruit was, you know, I was like, Oh wow, this is so weird, you know? But then interestingly enough, this baby bunny who we believe lost their parents, we saw, you know, some things, um, we, I've been like, Bubba and I have been working with this baby bunny, protecting it. Bubba's been babysitting it. Um, and I brought the fruit and the branches down to the bunny. And I was like, oh my gosh, cause the bunny would never be able to get that, you know? And I don't know if it, you know, the deer will eat it too. I have no idea, but either way it was like, I can look at it sad, like, oh no, I didn't get to eat that fruit or look at it like, oh cool. Now these animals who wouldn't be able to get it, will be able to share in the bounty of it. And there's still like three or four pieces on this little tree. If it makes it, we'll see, <laughs> um, you know, and I'll be grateful to even get one piece of fruit off of that. Right. Um, but just the tenacity of this tree, like it's still not going to let it, you know, uh, it's like, it's still, the tree still flourishing and the nest, I was sad, but then I realized, you know what? Those babies were getting big and I'm pretty sure that eggs probably been there a while, or maybe they kicked it out of the nest because it had, you know what I mean? Like it was not viable either way, you know, I, they're gone. And I was like, I bet they built a bigger nest. They know, they knew the, the, that was coming. There was a parents, there were parents, there were two birds. There was actually a multiple thing of birds taking care of them. It was Robins. They were all carrying, I didn't know they did that, but they were all like helping out with these, these babies. And then there was a woodpecker family and this other tree. I mean, they were, it was really cool, but now it's gone. Like they're, they're gone. And I was sad because I was like, Oh no, did I pray for this rain and like, it, you know, drown them out and, and spirits like, no, it, it forced them to grow. It forced them to evolve. They needed a bigger nest or maybe they just needed the baby birds. It was time for them to fly. You know what I mean? Like it was time for them to go either way. I don't know. I haven't seen them and I haven't seen anything on the ground. Blessed be. So all is well, right? So it's like they most likely rebuilt their nest somewhere else. And even for myself, I feel like I keep building nests and building nests and building nests. And I keep moving and moving and I'm like, spirit, I'm ready. I'm just like, I want to, I want my home. And they're like, you're almost there. You're almost there. You've been laying the foundation for this nest. You got it. You got it. You got it. But you have to believe in it. And I was like, okay. And I feel like it's the same for you guys. You know, you're going to have moments and you're going to have days that are harder than others. But the steadfast, it says, I'm going to read this again as we leave. Steadfast Avocet believes in the future of her chicks and counsels that you too remain steadfast. If you love, love deeply. If you believe in a cause, support it wholeheartedly, vociferously, no matter what or who opposes you. Then like Avocet, you will overcome all setbacks. There's one little thing that 
for those who you want to, the, the owl medicine, um, whichever one you're drawn to is fine, but they want you to also use discernment, which really is just wisdom. It's inner knowledge. It's your intuition to decide that, you know, I love this person, but I don't want them in my orbit. You can love somebody from afar. You do not have to love them and be in their life every single day. Okay. Let me see if there's any more messages. Are there any more messages for this beautiful reading too? Okay. Do we want to read from, do we have any medicine cards? Is there any other medicine or, okay, nope. Those are your messages and look in the community section for the picture of the Avocet. And they're, they're, this is your mantra, devotion overcomes setbacks. That's your mantra. Devotion overcomes setbacks. Devotion overcomes setbacks. Spirit said, if you painted a painting and you worked on it for nine months, hell, what if you wrote a book for nine years? You only had one copy and somebody accidentally threw water on it and it was a watercolor and your painting's gone. What if somebody accidentally knocked your book into the fire and it's gone? Would you start over? They want you to ask yourself, this is a really tough question. Would you start over? Or would you start something new? And you could start over, but it's not going to be the same, is it? Because you're not the same. And you could start something new, but you know what? Everything you wrote is going to influence everything you write. Because it's all within you all the time. And I keep seeing the number 44. It's at 144. And so the number eight is definitely profound for you guys. And I feel like the Lionsgate portal is going to be really, really, really proficient for you, like in multi on multiple levels. And also I'm hearing November 8th, a lot of things are, um, there's going to be a lot more clarity on the planet too. So that's interesting because the election, I believe is on the 7th. So, or the 5th, something somewhere around there in the United States. So very, very interesting. Okay. Those are your messages. I hope they helped you in any way. All of my information is all over here and I will see you at the next reading. Take good care of yourselves and each other. I love you. Bye. Blessed be. Oh. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome reading three. Please drink some water. <sighs> Interesting. The light has changed. They had me put this cute little cat in the hat sticker over the camera. And um, I don't know if it's temporary or permanent or whatever, but they wanted us to do this kind of podcast style because right now the messages are meant for you to each individually like discern like what medicine is for you. But I have to tell you that up until now, like the lighting was so different and I, I take breaks in between, you know, so how many hours this is. You can almost double that sometimes. <laughs> um, it depends how much time I take off in between. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I just had the best time getting ready for your reading. And the flamingo is so awesome. And you're so awesome. And thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. I even changed my clothes. I almost wish I could show you my outfit. I put on this kind of flamingo-y color uh, top and I'm channeling the flamingo as well. And, uh, but the screen is so different from the other readings. Like it's lighter, it's like got pinks and whites and the whole thing is they want you to be in your own mind. So you can either watch the screen or close your eyes. The Up until now, they've been really pushing for everyone to close their eyes. But you're the first reading that I felt like it's like whatever works for you. I just, the only thing I'm hearing is that just please focus on this. Because I do it myself. It's a horrible, horrible habit. But I, now that I've been watching... Um, movies on my laptop I will watch a movie especially if it's an old movie that I'm like oh I feel like watching that or you know blah 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 or I'll keep it on in the background while I'm doing stuff almost like the radio but then I find myself on my phone too and I'm like what the fuck like when did I become so Johnny Five like I'm just like seeking input all the time you know and some of it is good and well it's all good right because they're all lessons but 
but some of it's really draining and I'm feeling this really, it's interesting as much as I'm feeling like this, like happy flamingo energy. Cause when I think of flam flamingos, I think of happiness. Um, I mean, from real flamingos that I've seen in person to, you know, people having the plastic pink flamingos on their lawn when I was a kid growing up in the seventies, you know, I mean, and, and now today, right? They, they still do. There's just something about the flamingo. They're very special. They're very different. They're not like anything or anyone else. Um, sorry, I went to back up on this pillow and, um, I got poked with a, with a feather. Um, also that's interesting. If you're drawn to feathers, I think it was the last reading we, I mean, obviously we're doing bird readings, feathers, <laughs> it's on the nose. Um, but there was a message about that in the second and reading too. If you're not, don't make it your medicine. Like it doesn't belong to, you know what I mean? It's just like, could be for one person, but I'm straight up channeling right now. And I'm also working with the flamingo spirit. And as I was, I mean, I actually was on the page about to just like start fresh with the flamingo. But then all these other things started to come in and I just, I felt stork medicine. Well, actually I felt medicine, but I wasn't sure what it was. And when I opened the book back up to go to your page, the first thing that came to me was the painted stork. So I don't know if that means anything to you guys. Um, I won't get into the whole history of the stork, but I'll just say right here it says, if the stork has landed in your reading, it is to remind you of the pleasure and deep security familial closeness brings of the joy of caring and allowing family to care for us in turn such feelings are profoundly different in quality and effect from those endangered by the virtual friends and family of social media and above all she speaks of the rapture of parenthood so that is some medicine for somebody it feels very precise i feel like somebody just had an aha moment or like a breakthrough but um, on the card, it says parenthood and caring for family brings much joy. So I'm on the, on the card, it's a stork with like a mama stork with two baby storks in front of them. And I instantly felt this. I feel like for some of you, um, if you're feeling like you're in a funk or, um, like, sorry, I'm rubbing my, oh, I'm, I just said sorry. Why am I saying sorry? Oh my gosh, it's my Midwestern upbringing is coming into this reading. Maybe it's some of my Midwestern peeps. But anyway, I just started rubbing my belly, my sacral chakra. So work with the color orange, eat orange foods, you know, carrots, oranges, you know, on the nose stuff, but like yams um, or sweet potatoes. But yeah, like I'm hearing like, like, and, and like cashews, like things, if you can, like, it, you know, everybody's different, but, um, also I want to say before we go any further that, um, you were the only reading so far that wanted some crystals. And so you may want to pause this and go and get pen and paper. And if you can't, then maybe, uh, make a mental note or a screenshot of the time and you can come back to this and then you can, um, if you forget. So the crystals that spirit wants you to work with are bloodstone, Lemurian star seed, quartz crystal, apophyllite, and vanadinite. I think I'm saying that right. If I'm not, uh, you can research them. If you don't know the spellings, just ask in the comments below and um, we'll, we'll help you out. We'll get that sorted out for you. Um, okay. And interesting the vanadinite is the only one that wanted me to tell you what it's for it's a grounding crystal okay so that's one thing so obviously somebody needs to work with their root chakra and um oh and it's the sacral chakra get out it says right on here sacral chakra did i say didn't i just say root chakra so it's both and maybe it's your root chakra. Maybe you're feeling ungrounded because your sacral's off. Whoa, that's, that's some fucking powerful medicine, man. Okay, so the vanadinite crystals are chakra stones for the sacral chakra, opening this energy center to allow for higher libido, passion, and inspiration. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, it connects the mind with the lower chakras and provides motivation, clear thoughts, organization, and determination for achieving your goals. 
Um, it is safe to handle, but it does say that it does contain lead and vanadium. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So don't put it, it's not for ingestion or, you know, the dust of it or the inhalation. Oh my gosh, that's so funny <laughs> because our friend gave us this and like, it's been falling apart since we got it. And I'm like, it says, avoid the inhalation of the dust due to its toxicity. I'm like, oh, interesting. I had it out of the bedroom or had it in the bedroom when we first got it. And then I took it out of the bedroom and I put it back in the bedroom just the last few days and I haven't been sleeping well. <gasps> That's so interesting. So maybe don't keep it in your bedroom. That's interesting. And you can work with that energy without actually touching the stone. Okay. So there's that. Um, and then the little snail spirit animal came in the form of a crystal, which I don't know which one this is. I need to investigate. Um, but it's got the spiral on it. And yesterday when I was working on the property, I took the greatest footage. I mean, I tried to get as much as I could of this cute little snail. And I've been feeling such snail energy from spirit. Like they're really trying to, it's like we're in a, in a quagmire, right? Because like we want to, like it feels natural for us to move at a really fast pace, right? It feels natural to us because we're fucking light workers. We're light beings having a human experience, right? But like if you found yourself here, especially on this reading, you're a star seed, like you're here to work. So it's confusing because you have all this energy, but yet you're like, like you physically don't feel good and don't have good energy and spirit saying, because you're not working with your tools properly, right? Like I love propane because I need it to you know, make my stove work to make my heat work in my home. But if you turn propane on, it smells disgusting and it'll freaking kill you. Right? So I wouldn't sleep with a slow leak of propane in my bedroom. Just like now I won't sleep with that in my bedroom, which thank you spirit. I'm interesting that they had me bring that up. Like, cause I didn't even know that. And that it, we had that one and the other one, um, that, that was gifted to us, the pre night, which is good for sleep. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All I'm saying is it's just funny. Like how we don't like, I should have said, Oh, what, what is this crystal? And found out more about it. And it's like, we have to remember to have like respect for like our things and these healing tools and like, and, and why they're here for us. Um, but getting back to the painted stork, they're saying for some of you, um, it's the joy of caring for others is what really is ooh, 155 35. If that means anything, add them up or it could be separate because it was one hour, 55 um, minutes and 35 seconds. So however you want to look at that um, and drink some more water because what are the flamingos like? Water. They love the beach. Why? Because their favorite food is shrimp which gives them that color. I didn't even know that. I started reading the book and I'm like, oh, that's so amazing. We'll get there. So the stork is this energy of caring and parenthood and giving and wanting to, you know, give. When I looked, I saw number 11, right? Yeah. Cause it's the angel in us. It's the angel. It's our natural angel in us that wants to, you know, to be that caregiver, you know, those who chose the alien, you know, angel, whatever you want to call it, the, it's like, we're part of the empathy, the heart chakra, you know, however you want to look at it. But if our sacral chakra is off balance, then everything else is off balance too. And so I feel like that's what they're trying to say. So if you're giving all of your energy to something that's never going to, at least right now, not in this current state is going to change. It could change tomorrow, of course. But my eyes go to the other, on um, this page, uh, when you open this book, there's four different birds on it. And my eyes just went to the bearded vulture. And this says, if vulture has glided from the high thermals into your cards, she counsels you too to be what you seem. In love, this is the moment to wear your heart upon your sleeve. In life, to speak truly of the things that matter to you. Yes, because have you noticed that, you know, if someone really loves you, and I know that it shouldn't be about a test or whatever, but lately we're seeing that everything's about fucking tests right now and how we're going to rise to the occasion. And love is the only answer to everything. However, as we work through 
navigating ourselves back to ourselves of pure love and light we still have to go through those bits and pieces and morsels of the human life that we lived this one beyond most of us that are here we are the ones that are stopping the ancestral you know crap right in our blood and bone just because i don't speak to my blood and bone right now doesn't make it any less important to me of their their lives right i love them i want them to be so happy I just don't want to be in their orbit and I don't want them, I don't belong in their orbit, you know, if and when the time comes for us to be in each other's orbit again, it'll happen. But sometimes you really do have to just love somebody from afar. This has been the common thread that's been coming through here because a lot of us are holding on to people, places, and things like emotional hoarders and they're really showing us like how much we have to let shit go and that you know, God sees all, God sees all, the creator sees all, whatever you believe in, you know, it's like, yes, there's higher beings that are watching it. It's, this is like, each one of us are in our own movie, our own TV series, like, right? Every one of us. So the vulture is very powerful. Their word says, let outward deeds and words match inner feelings. Right? Like if you love somebody, show them. And if you're not liking someone, you know, discuss it with them what's happening. If they don't want to listen, then they don't love you. You know, and a lot of people right now don't love themselves, so they cannot love you. And a lot of us are going through a lot of self-loathing and a lot of self-hatred. And it's so much of the child trauma, all of it. I mean, all of it. You know, they, they have done studies. I mean, it's pretty obvious if somebody, you know, has one childhood and then another child has another childhood, you know, the likelihood of like, you know, it's like birds of a feather, right? Birds of a feather, we stick together. So I had to do a little Billy. Her new album, Blue, is so good. There's so many good songs on there. Um, anyway, a little therapy for you. Seek out Billie Eilish's new album. So the vulture, you know, is talking about, we should be able to say what we think and feel all the time from our heart. And if you're in a situation or around people that don't allow you to speak from your heart, you know, that's not a nurturing environment. And getting back to the, the mother and the children, I keep seeing this image of that. I feel like some of you have children and I'm seeing two, but interesting. I'm seeing, um, a mother with two girls and a mother with two boys. And so take that for however it resonates with you. But I see you being like, let's go camping or let's go on a, you know, just like two or three days away with them brings you so much joy and laughter. And I'm hearing go visit them or like have you guys all meet somewhere together. It doesn't have to be about the money. You know, it could be something really, really simple. Maybe it's just a day. Maybe you go, and do something you love together. Maybe you love going to see a movie together. There's a lot of great movies out this summer. You know, maybe you love to go and get manis and petties. Like, that's your thing. Like, whatever makes you feel good. Just make sure you do it in a safe environment. I'm not really pro those facilities because I think they kind of creep me out. But just because of the, just the toxins and everything they have to use to clean out between people. Unless they're doing it in some natural way, then, you know. Anyway. There are some good spas out there, so I'll leave it to you. But keeping that environment in an up, like a high vibration, right? Um, or maybe it's you and like your sibling and you go and take your mom out for lunch. And you're just so excited to see her. And she's so excited to see you guys, you know, like something like that, that really brings you joy. But make sure that it's people that are that, that bring you joy and elevate your your vibration. I mean, last night I was so angry with spirit and then this morning I was like crying and I felt like in that moment in Steel Magnolias where she, you know, when Julia Roberts' character, you know, has the attack, 
when she's getting ready for her wedding and then afterwards she's so mad when it happens and afterwards she's like I'm so sorry I ruined my hair you know you did this great work and then Dolly Parton's like we'll fix it we'll fix it honey it's okay right and I feel like that's what it is right now oh I'm starting to cry because like I was like giving the finger to spirit last night because I'm just like stop with the fucking tests already like I'm exhausted I'm like do not see how fucking tired I am you know it's like but in the same breath in the same breath I could feel that they weren't mad at me because they knew I needed to get that out. And then this morning I was like, I'm so sorry, you know, like, fuck, like, I want to be better. I want to be stronger for you. I'm like, I feel like I suck. You know, I was like, you know, this is true emotion, right? Because I just been like, why can't I be stronger for everybody? And they're like, dude, if you even knew how strong you are, if you even knew how much joy and happiness and greatness you're bringing to everybody right now they're like you don't even know but they're like we fucking got you man like this is your year just keep having faith and I'm like okay you know because it's getting back up the millionth time you're gonna fall down it's gonna suck you're gonna feel alone last night I was like I'm so lonely <laughs> I was like but I'm not because they're here you know but I, I meant like when I when I said I was lonely I meant like I'm alone in my thoughts. I'm alone in my past. I'm alone in my feelings. You know what I mean? Like I can tell my partner, I can tell you, but it's like nobody experienced my experiences the way I did because it only happened to me in my movie. If there were 600 people in the same experience I was having, we're all going to have 600 different experiences. Every person who went to Taylor Swift, con Taylor Swift's concerts, you know, like they, or watched it or whatever. It's like, everybody's going to have a different experience with it. You know, some people are like making fun of her and saying, oh, she's doing the same thing over and over. She's just an actor. She's just an actor. And I'm like, exactly. She's playing a part. When she wrote those songs, when she went through that, she went through it. Of course, she had heartbreak and cried and laughed and danced with her friends. You know what I mean? But you perform a song, trust me from experience, you perform something over and over and over again. You lose the sensitivity with it. It does become an act. And you go into that character of what happened during that time. But you don't live there. She's a fucking genius. She's actually, she's, we're watching her therapy on live national, international, you know, coverage. You know, just like I, spirit drew me to watch this Simone Biles story. I had no idea. But when I was growing up, I was a gymnast. I wanted to be Mary Lou Retton. I mean, it was because of Nadia Comaneci getting a perfect 10 that my dad and I were out in my backyard doing practicing flip-flops until it was dark and my mom kept yelling at him you know it was late let her in like she's got school tomorrow or or it was just late I don't remember when it was but you know um and then it was like watching her story and seeing all that I was like wow it's like I almost forgot like how much I love gymnastics and I've been watching gymnastics and it's just been really really interesting so you know, don't downplay those emotions from your past, but work through them. Just don't let them rule the show, right? It's like Shelby was having the attack because her nervous system and her mom even says at one point, like, no wonder why she's sick. It's because she's constantly giving. She's always saying yes. And then when she finally spoke up for something she wanted, everybody was like, oh, no, that's going to kill you. And she's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't want people treating me like this for the rest of my life. She's like, I want to do this. I want to have a baby. And even if I don't live, I don't care. I, this is what I want. It's the only thing I want. And she did. And yeah, it's a sad story, but it's a beautiful story too of triumph and about, you know, getting back up again until you can't. So spirit is saying it's time, you know, um, Interestingly enough, there are two other birds on this page, and as of right now, I'm not feeling anything towards them, but if they have me come back to it, I will. But we're going to jump to you, the main character, the flamingo. Oh, so <clears throat> the card says, nourish your soul and you will survive harsh circumstances. Exactly. <clears throat> like the fucking phoenix, man. I love it. You guys are amazing. And right underneath that is the peregrine falcon. Peregrine falcon. This is so good. So the flamingo, it says, Flaming flamingo lives on Africa's baking volcanic salt lakes, which in summer's hostile heat become caustic white curds. But what is harsh for one is mana for another. And here, shrimp, 
proliferates wildly, providing Flamingo with abundant food and the flashing pink pigment of her feathers. Have you guys been noticing a pattern of the female energy of the birds, the Divine Feminine? I have because since I've been doing this all the way through um, and each one has been different but it's all been there's been a lot of divine feminine spirit medicine coming through um, these energies um, but definitely in your reading like flowing through this for sure so um, it says if flamingo has landed in your cards she counsels that no matter how appalling circumstances seem no matter how devastating a tragedy you, like her, will endure and in time flourish. Flamingo could not banish the burning salts, nor bid the sun flame less fiercely, but Flamingo survived and now offers you her blazing strength. Do not look to the consolations to be found in glittering shop windows, for they will fade. Being as ephem ephemeral as the intense color of her feathers, when ripped from her living flesh, Look instead to nourish your spirit and soul. Wow. So I am urging you. So your spirit guides and my spirit guides are asking you. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take a deep dive into the flamingo spirit medicine outside of this reading. When you leave this, go to whatever research channel you are into. Look up flamingo spirit animal. You can look up spirit medicine, whatever applies, but definitely spirit animal. It's so powerful. Also, the one thing that, that spirit wanted me to show you was that it's, or tell you about, is that it's on page 40 and it's the number four and four is all about balance. And yes, flamingos can fly, but we, we see them on the ground a lot and it makes sense because that's where they eat. They're feeding. They're feeding from the sea. And it's easier to feed, you know, they go to where it's, you know, easiest, where they can stand up and look and see the shrimp and like grab them and eat them. I have to say when I did eat non-vegan, oh man, I, real good shrimp, man. There's nothing like really good shrimp. I used to love a, like cooked and, or steamed and then cold with a cocktail sauce. It made me think of all the times that I was in Florida. I felt so blessed to see so many cool things like that, like alligators and flamingos, things that growing up in Chicago and the Midwest that I did not see on a regular basis. But also for some of you, the peregrine falcon. It says, falcon is the lord of the skies, the fastest being to grace earth. Falcon is aerodynamic falcon is aerodynamic beauty clothed in softest cream and brownie gray his head held proudly high he is true poetry in motion the dry desert sky cleaves for falcon his body a blur as he dives at almost 200 miles an hour toward the glittering sands of the desert below for, for from his lofty cruising altitude falcon's pinpoint vision has revealed a bird flying in the sharp rays of the saharan sun food for life food for survival he snatches it from the air wow interesting so interesting like i feel like this i feel like i'm yelling first of all because <laughs> i'm far away from the computer and i don't know i've never done it this way before i hope you're enjoying it um but i'm gonna take some stuff off because i put on some joy when i started this and now i'm feeling like i want to i feel like that's what spirit wants you to do is like take some stuff off like there's like a burden like I feel like you can't dive to the depths of like, you know, the falcon is because you're not allowing yourself to do this. This is what I'm hearing. And interesting that we, I just spoke of the divine feminine and then we deep dive into the divine masculine right after that. Okay. Oh, when I looked down, it was two eleven eleven. Okay. So two is the duality of the divine feminine and masculine and eleven eleven is also that duality and the mirror of the angel energy so i want you guys to work with um oh i'm sunburned i'm like why is that like that i'm like oh I've, i was outside yesterday and sometimes i've gotten so tan now because i'm outside all the time i've gotten so tan now um <laughs> that like i don't even notice when i'm sunburned until something hurts and i'm like oh oh yeah okay anyway um i digress so, but isn't that interesting? Maybe that was a side note to you guys too, to like take care of your skin, take care of yourself. Um, it's, it, it does make a massive difference that you take care of yourself, okay? And your skin, that came in for a reason. Okay, so 
I think it's interesting. So I feel like they're saying once we deep dive into that divine masculine that's burdening us because I feel like there's something with the oh now when I looked across it was two twelve twelve okay you guys are you guys are really powerful I almost feel like I can't even I feel it almost mesmerized at the screen which means that you guys are like that too like you're mesmerizing and you're here to take the medicine so you can teach the medicine for some of you I feel like you're meant to start um, your own channel like it's time to start doing that and I feel like that's why you can't make money or you can't find a job because you are go you won't even believe it okay so I'm going to if spirit calls me to I will put a link below to one of my favorite readers of all time um, I have a lot but one of my favorite is white feather tarot and I feel blessed I, I started watching her when she had like 3,000 viewers now I think she has like 300,000 she's just so amazing Reem I love her she's in Egypt she's so loving and kind and um you know if for some reason i neglect to put a link to her channel seek her out white feather tarot three separate words her name is reem r-e-e-m and she's just powerful and beautiful and kind and loving and i feel like there's a reason why she became so successful so quickly because she's so genuine she gives all of that love in her heart to doing readings every single day or at least she puts them out every day i don't know she may record more than one i don't know her schedule it's none of my beeswax but what i'm trying to say is that you know even when she needs to speak of something in a more harsh like energy she still does it in a way that's like i feel like she's like a mom you know like you could just go to her readings and um and I feel like for a while I was taking all these readers that I really respected and looked up to and I kept trying to be like them and just be in this like high vibration all the time and spirits like you're not them though <laughs> they're like you're meant to like bring that you know and I've been blessed to have just a few times where I would like comment or she would just post something and I would comment and she remembers me and like she'll she would say like the nicest things to me or she would like encourage me or be like keep going with your channel and you know like she's just really cool like that you know and I'm like dude it's like she remembers me from the beginning that's how special she is and um I try to remember everybody I really do but um anyway long story short I feel like this is you at least one of you you know or it's for all of you and they're like telling you to start your own thing or start your own business you're not you're not going where you're going because you're not in where you need to be right like if you want something you have to put yourself there you if you need something to change in your life you have to make the change to make it happen I had all these breakthrough aha moments in the last week and I'm so excited to work with this Leo fire moon energy I'm so excited to, I'm just excited all the way around to work with so many different things and so many different energies I can feel them coming I can feel the the Lionsgate portal and I hope that you're feeding into that as well so work through all these energies but you need to deep dive into the masculine you know that I mean it's like it was like clear as day right when I heard that I just was like oh my gosh like it's so powerful so it's like I feel like you're like 75% there but it's that last 25% of the divine masculine that you haven't healed. And most likely, it's the divine masculine that's in your face, that's in your life, whether it's your boss, significant other, a parent, somebody, or it could be they are female identified, but they're really masculine driven, right? So they're like really harsh, like it could be a mother, but she's like super like harsh, like she's like in her masculine all the time and most of the time women who are in their masculine all the time that comes from a protection oh my gosh this, my door just went to it I thought it was gonna slam but it went to it's like it's almost shut and I feel like for some of you this is gonna sound really dark but like as there were certain people in my life as they started to die off I became stronger and they came to me in their spirit form and they like were like I'm so sorry I was so hard on you I'm so sorry blah 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 and it's because they love you they actually don't want to be that person but they are stuck in something that happened to them in their childhood that they most likely will never heal in this lifetime um, especially if they're close to death or it could be that you know maybe towards the end of this lifetime who knows but for right now it's like it's like it's like you're trying to talk to somebody through a glass wall you can see each other but it's like 
12 inches thick and you can't hear a fucking word they're saying and you can kind of make out what they're saying and maybe it makes you happy or maybe it frustrates you and then you're like why am I talking to this person at all you don't even need to hear them right you just you can tell by their body language or the things that they're saying like what they're really saying you know um it's like all of that stuff is like taking over your existence and it's part of like it's like the last 25 percent of the egg that shell that we all need to you know what I mean we I'm, I've, been, I've been having aha moments this whole reading I love it I that's why I love it because you know you guys this is a give and receive right like we we're we are literally holding space for each other right now because every time I'm having like every time spirit gives you stuff I share some of my morsels or they will give me an analogy that will help you that I don't have or that they believe that you will understand more or better through that. You know, um, it's hard talking about ourselves and our own stories. You know, it's interesting. When I was younger, all I wanted to do was talk about myself. But that's because I wanted attention. I desperately needed attention. I saw something recently. I made a shorts out of it. Uh, I'll post it on Lula's Life at some point, I'm sure. And um, she was like, something about people bullying you it's just because they don't love themselves is basically what she says and it's like yeah and you should feel sad for that because you know when when you when you don't allow the bully to give you take any more of your power they don't have any power and then they have to seek the power within you know it's like those movies where the bully is exposed in front of everybody my favorite movie not that I want that to happen, but if I'm going to watch a, a movie that's like a come circle, come up in full circle moment, I love the movies where the bully is somebody that everybody thinks is awesome, but they only bully like one or two people and people don't believe them because that happened to me a lot throughout my life. And people thought I was the asshole because I, because of so many reasons. But there are a lot of people who bullied me throughout my life who were like perfect in everyone's eyes. But behind the scenes, they were like saying awful, horrible things to me or they would like hurt me, you know, physically or just like all these things where I was like, OK, but they're really this way or, you know, and it was like they didn't want to see the person for who they were, because a lot of times bullies also do a mirror up to somebody they're brilliant right because they know how to manipulate energy and manipulate the situation so if they're manipulating a situation um you know your your mom's pinching you in church to behave but in front of everyone's faces they're like oh isn't my child wonderful but then when you're like not in front of those people you know, it's like you try to be yourself and they're like, put you down for being yourself. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, that's real shit. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I, my foot like involuntarily kicked the computer <laughs> because it's like, right? Like, hello. Yeah. I'm telling my story. That's just one of many. We become what we're made. We learn to wear masks in front of people, but spirits saying you're a flamingo, man. You look at the color, look at, I mean, flamingos are so beautiful. It's like, they're like a swan meets like a, a, a well, the avocet. <laughs> Their legs remind me of the avocet that we just read about in reading too, right? Like there's just so much beauty and elegance in a flamingo and the way they fly and, you know, anyway, you are a beautiful, 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 beautiful flamingo. And don't let anybody tell you different. And you fought hard to get to where you are. So don't give up. Keep going. I feel like that's it. I feel like those are our messages. Like, I just, like, closed the book. And let me make sure, though. Do we want to pull any more cards? Or do we have any more messages for reading three? Nope, that's it. Um, if you were pulled to reading four... The coolest thing about reading four is that it's going to be a reading within a reading. And um, I am so excited. So anyway, if you're pulled to it, if you're not, thank you so much for being here. All of my information is in the description box and in the comments. If you would like to contribute any decks, my Amazon wish list is back up and running. Uh, if there are any decks in there that you have been excited to have someone read for you with, 
um, and you haven't seen it in my arsenal, it obviously it would be there because I don't have it. <laughs> um, I was like, wait a second, I should probably go through and make sure, but um, I'm pretty sure everything in there is the way it's supposed to be. I do. There's a few more I'm going to add though too. Um, but anyway, feel free to donate to the tribe, and we do a nice little reading where we call you out. If you want to, you can remain anonymous if you'd like to, but we give you a shout out and a big thank you from the tribe and we do a little mini reading and you get a little mini reading in that for you as well as a thank you for that. And um, yeah, and then there are other ways to contribute to the channel if you can, if you can. If not, prayer is good. Prayer is good because every prayer of abundance that you send my way comes back to you as well. Okay, so it's about giving and receiving right now. But just make sure that who you're giving to is for the greatest and highest good of all and not just for one and not just for you. And I'm telling you, the more you give out, the more you get back. That's the energy that is out there right now. Don't hoard your feelings, emotion, emotions, love, money. You know, it's all, they're all, and the material shit can all be replaced. Remember that. And the more you put out, the more you get back. All right. When I looked down, it was 223.10. So that's five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, yes, and do not forget about the 8-8 eight, eight portal because this year is 8-8-8. Eight, eight, eight. It's going to be very powerful. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for it yet because, you know, I go day by day with spirit. So um, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and all that, and keep us up in the algorithm so we can get out there and get the message to those who need the message from spirit through this venue, through this portal, through my channel. It's just another portal to receive information. Um, I feel like I'm channeling Jeff Goldblum. I just started watching Jurassic Park again. <laughs> anyway, it's free on YouTube this month. Um, and yeah, that's that's it. All right. I love you so much. I'll see you next time and take good care of yourselves and each other. Love you. Bless be. Oh, bye. Ah, the bookends. Number four. When I say that, I mean the eagle started the reading and the owls ending the reading. And your reading started at two hours and 24 minutes exactly, which is the number eight, which we've been talking about the 888 portal um, right now as I speak to you I'm looking through these beautiful evergreens and there's definitely owls in here I hear them um, so I don't know if we'll be blessed with any today but it is summertime on a Friday where I live in a very touristy area a lot of motorcycles there's like a, a, a biker club uh, down the street and so um, it's interesting anyway so I'm going to do my best to stay on target and stay on task with you because I've already spoke with all these other beautiful uh, fair feathered creatures today I'm feeling so much energy um, I don't even know where to begin okay so let me back up a little bit if you haven't watched anything else before this if you didn't watch the energy update for the tribe or watch any of the other readings um welcome and welcome back to those of you who keep coming back um and uh thank you for being here we are in in deep grace and gratitude for your presence but i'm feeling such an interesting energy that i haven't felt in a really long time so i'm excited but also not nervous just like <sighs> Did you ever get that feeling that someone's about to tell you something and you're and you're you're excited about it but you don't know why you're excited? You don't know if you're excited because you're quote unquote scared good or scared bad, but that's the whole thing is they don't want us to be in fear anymore. They don't want us to have any fear or even think of the word scared because it's a very old human construct form that was put in place to literally control like literally like that's so let's take a few moments close your eyes please and if you've noticed I'm doing it on like a podcast format I do these for my readings as well my one-on-one -on -one readings and all of my information for that is in the description box and the comments also I have just changed my rates and I have um, some new offerings so feel free to check that out and you can email me if you're interested in working with me and I know it seems like a half an hour isn't a lot of time but you know 
if it's not, I'll let you know and say, wait till you can come back for an hour. Um, but you know, even in a half an hour, you'd be surprised how much could come through. So, uh, my offerings are on there anyway. They've been wanting me to press that forward because I feel like a lot of you, either you're my regulars and you need a little, uh, tuning, <laughs> right? Or you're new to my energy field, my orbit, you're new to me. And you're like, wait, I want to have a one-on-one -on -one reading with the magical medium, uh, which my name is Lula, by the way, you can call me Tallulah or Lula, whatever feels good to you. So, um, we are doing it this way because spirit has for a long time been trying to get us to connect to them this way. If you're driving or you're somewhere where you can't close your eyes, they're asking, can you come back and do this when you can actually really connect with us and owl spirit and close your eyes? Because the whole point of this exercise and why this reading took place like this is because they want you to use your intuition, your imagination. They're are many messages coming out of my mouth through this whole entire transmission, you know, and so each of us are going through our own transformation and metamorphosis and right now, especially, and we're at all different levels of our consciousness. So it's not just a blanket reading. Sometimes it is sometimes, you know, it's visual. I, you know, I love doing the visual. I'm sure I'll do, you know, they have it, they change it up all the time. Um, I love my visuals, but today it's about your visual. It's about your connection to yourself and to spirit. It's about opening that door and really saying like, okay, what is my purpose? Or I know my purpose. I just don't know where to start my path. When the owl came to me, in meditation today it was such a beautiful moment I speak about it at the beginning in the uh, energy update messages from spirit for the tribe the collective reading if you want to go back and watch that it's at the beginning um, but it was really magical the way it happened and then as I started putting it together with spirit and we were building it together I started to see the owl in a more in-depth way and then I went to open up because I started, you know, with the medicine card book first, and then I pulled in the bird message oracle. And then when that happened, I have my eyes closed too, by the way. <laughs> they wanted me to tell you that I have my eyes closed too. I love when they let me do that. Or not let me, but like they, you know, have me share that with you because we're in the same experience. I'm just your guide. I'm just, the, I'm just your guide through your experience. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Um, and thank you, Anna, for that beautiful message of recognition earlier. I have changed and um, I'm trying so hard as you are too, every day to evolve, to change, to, you know, scatter seeds out to the wind and see what comes back, you know. And because in real time, this reading is taking place two days before the new moon, I feel like this is like a rebirth, a new, a really real serious new rebirth though you know, with the owl and the Leo fire and the moon and just a lot of really cool energy coming through. So when I went to pick up the book, I was like, well, there's owls in here too. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, which owl do you want me to use from this book or that book? And they were like, yes. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, oh, okay. I get it. You want me to combine the medicine? I'm like, that's cool. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, why didn't you have me do that for the eagle? I'm like, oh, because I'm not supposed to. Right. Because in the bird messages, there are three separate owls. And there's one owl representation in the medicine cards. So technically there's four. And I feel like the lead is our medicine spirit is from the Native American deck. Because in the medicine cards, because it is like the owl spirit, right? It's not just one type of owl, it's owl spirit. But in the bird messages, there are different owls that have different meaning because of different places where they live. So that's why they wanted me to break it down. And we're doing this reading within a reading. I love it. As my birthday sister would say, the Easter eggs. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so fun to find the messages within the messages. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the owl. And then we are going to jump into the individual owls. Okay, so here we go. Ooh, 
it's so bright in my house when I open my eyes. You can keep your eyes closed or you can keep them open. So the interesting thing about this is it's on page 121, but the owl is the 21st spirit animal, spirit medicine animal, however you want to word it, um, in this book, in this deck. So 21 is 3, 121 is 4. So it could be that maybe you were drawn to reading 3 because reading 3 would be 2 and 1 together is 3. And then we spoke about balance and the number 4 in the flamingo, okay, in reading 3. But we also spoke about it in the other reading. So if you're drawn to them, please go watch them. If not, if it's not your medicine, it's not your medicine. So here is the introduction from Grandmother Twyla. And she says, Owl magic, omens, time, and space. Does the truth emerge, casting out deception, silent flight, sacred medicine bird? Mm. And it was also 22.33.05 when I finished that. So what is that? So five, so eleven. Ooh, it's 13. Woo! The Divine Feminine. Yes. Yes, Grandmother. Yes. So... With that being said, they want me to start with this and then I'm going to jump into the individual. And the owl spirit says, Owl medicine is symbolically associated with clairvoyance, astral projection, and magic, both black and white. Owl is called night eagle on several medicine wheels used by Amerit Indian teachers. Traditionally, owl sits in the east, the place of illumination. Since time immemorial, humanity has been afraid of the night, the dark, and the unseen, waiting fearfully for the first crack of morning light. Conversely, night is owl's friend. So, owl hunts its prey at night. Not only can owl see in the dark, but it can also accurately pinpoint and identify any sound. This gives it a great advantage when seeking food. Owls are the night hunters. Some native people are fearful of owl and call its feathers deceiver feathers. An owl feather is silent. You cannot hear owl when it flies, but its prey definitely knows when it strikes, for its beak and talons are razor sharp. Owl is oftentimes the medicine of sorcerers and witches. If owl is your medicine, you will be drawn to magical practices and perhaps explore the dark arts. You should resist any temptation to practice black magic or any art that takes energy away from another person or being. If you have owl medicine, these night birds will have a tendency to collect around you even in the daytime because they recognize a kinship with you. Hmm. Is it any wonder that in many cultures, owl is a symbol for wisdom? Drink some water, stay hydrated. We're going to stop there. <clears throat> and they asked me to go, <clears throat> ooh, clear your throat chakra. Work. Whoa, speak your truth. Speak your truth. Speak your truth. Ooh, what's going on there? Okay. 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 So let me get my little monocle out because I broke my glasses. So I'm trying to read with just this little, I either need to get new glasses or I got to work on my eyes. I think I need to just work on my eyes. Okay, so interesting that owl on this is number eight. And they're saying not yet, so we may be closing with that. So we're going to start with the barn owl. Okay, I've already said that I love a message within a message. But when you get a message within a message within a message, that's awesome. So that being said, for some of you, you're going to have more extended messages in the community section. So um, there's so much on the barn owl, barn owl in this book, but they specifically want me to just stick with this one part. And then if you want to know more or you want to get a deeper interpretation of interpretation, um, my family's from the South. It's like, it's in, it's in me. <laughs> I swear it just comes out sometimes. Um, it was probably an old Nana or something that did what I do. But anyway, 
seek out the community section because I'll take screenshots of it and put it in there and it'll even say like, you know, interpreting your messages like barn owl, you know. Um, yeah, so there you go. Okay, so it says barn owl sits silently. Wait, hold on. <laughs> this is hold on. Okay, it even paused at 237.13, which there's so much even in there. Duality in the two, the seven and three, ten, like, endings and new beginnings, and then the 13, the divine feminine, so. Whew. Okay, so here we go. Barn owl slips silently through the frosty air. Say that five times. Barn owl slips silently through the frosty air. Mysterious white ghost of the Crepusecular sec hours. I don't know this word. I must look it up. None may hear her coming. Barn owl sees little, but hears so much. Your heartbeat hammering in the dusk, the tiniest movement of beetle under a foot of snow, and, and asymmetric ears hidden delicately between her warm vanilla ice cream colored feathers mean that barn owl knows exactly where the living creature who made that sound is located. Barn owl's heart-shaped face speaks of love and barn owl mates for life faithfully. The quickly discarded thrills of a secret tryst to her mean nothing. Know that if barn owl has glided noiselessly into your reading today, Love, like the barn owl, is approaching unobserved and unexpectedly. Its bearer knows just where to find you and possesses the secret knowledge they need to unlock the loud and passionate beating of your love's warm heart. And this love may last a lifetime. Oh, barn owl! Because I'm like, I can't just say owl. Like, you're like reading one in the owl. So reading one within reading four. Oh my gosh. Even that, like it's reading four, but you're reading one. What is that? Number five. It's change and transformation. And I'm getting, it's because a lot of you, we spoke of this in some of the other readings. So maybe this is like your culmination moment. And maybe you're drawn to the wisdom of the owl. Cause you're like, I feel like that. Like, I feel like I'm at the end of something and something new is coming. I have faith. I believe in spirit. I know it's here. Like all this faith and everything has like come to you. And like this love that you've been craving. And for most of you, I'm going to say, I do feel like this is definitely a romantic love. Um, I think the unexpected is for some of you, it may be somebody of your same gender, quote unquote, or sex or however you, you know what I mean? Like, and that can go in so many different interpretations. So I will leave that up to you. But it basically, I feel like it is, it's going to be somebody unexpected or like a meet cute at like a coffee shop or something like that, where, um, I don't know. I don't want to say too much because I feel my throat chakra is getting tight and I'm hearing, oh, be open. Please be open. I'm hearing some of you are like, no, I don't want love. I'm going to feel hurt. I'm, and they're like, no, like, oh my gosh, I feel like I can't talk. You want to know what the saying is? This is your mantra. Love approaches unexpectedly. That is your mantra from the time you hear this. If you're here right now, your higher self is called, um, you guys, can you let me go? Oh, I feel like a big joke. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, I got it. I'm sorry. Whoo, let it go, you guys. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Drink some water, drink some water, breathe, choke it out, cry, cry if you got to. Hush, hush, keep it down now. Voices carry. Oh my gosh, that song is like going off in my head. So I don't know who that's for or what that means, but also Kate Hudson just did a version of that on Howard Stern and it was amazing. Um, that that is originally from um, Berlin. Okay, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Okay, so listen. Oh, my loves, my loves. I'm just like, okay, so I definitely feel like you need to go into the interpret the message. So go in the community section and, um, you know, I, I put out the breadcrumbs as spirit wants me to. So I'm going to leave that there because I feel like some of you are really having a hard time. I feel like some of you, you're either in a relationship or you're still pining for an old relationship and they're saying it's not, it's not, it's not. And they said, if you look at it like this, like 2024 is a year, it's like an eight year. 
some people are going to be in the energy of eight and evolve out of even the fifth dimensional energy. Like they're going to be in a non-dimensional energy. They're just going to be so connected to like the Christ consciousness, which is God, which is goddess creator, which is love. You know what I mean? Like some people are just going to, they're like, uh, like if you're here, I feel like you're already here. Like we're already there. It's just that we're living in certain, right? Like we're still having like these patterns with people and places and things, and they may come correct and they may not. So some people will change and evolve and like become who they're meant to be in this year. And some people are, it's going to, it's going to take until 2026 in that completion year. It'll be like the 10, like they finally made it, like they finally made it. And I feel like if by 2026, when people are talking about like, oh, like this big thing's going to happen, what I feel like is going to happen. And I've seen a lot of things, but 2026 has been on my radar since I started doing like, even since before uh, COVID and all that. When I was doing readings at Psychic Sister in Olympia, Washington, like I, I was getting vibes for 2026. And I remember back then people were like, it's so far away. I'm like, yeah, but time speeding up, man. And it's going to come real fucking quick. And here we are. It's like, it's two years away and so much has happened between then. But I do feel like that is going to be the tip off of where it's going to be. The planet will and be more in a high vibration than a low vibration. And I think the people who don't change by 2026, they may change before they die, but I kind of feel like that's who they're most likely going to be. And it's like, we're getting like this time in this window, but for the light workers, we're really getting, they're amping it up right now. Cause they're like, we need you now though. We need your light now. Like we need you anchored here now. We need your love light now. So does that mean that like you might not, that you may reconnect with that person in a few years? You might like, I don't, you know, there's no, there's no rules in each person's story. Like it's different, you know, sorry that if you hear weird noises, if I farted, I'll tell you I farted. <laughs> that's from my couch. <laughs> but anyway, that's my fairy. That's bubbles. Um, but there is something inside of all of us that recognizes on this planet right now. I don't care who, what you are, the animals, all of us, we are all going through something. We can feel it. That's why the animals that are like, you know, responding differently and they're like having animal attacks like they feel it it's a threat energy you know I watched this very interesting video about donkeys and and mother donkeys and um, not not just donkeys but like how some animals when they have a baby they will kick it to death they will kill it and it's horrific and awful um, but they said it's it's a it's kind of like their form of postpartum depression they don't understand like that there was something growing inside of them. Not all of them do. Some of them feel the mothering energy the second they're pregnant. They just know it. That's why they'll, they'll like cut a bitch if you come near them when they're pregnant. You know what I mean? And then there's some of them that they're like, this sounds awful, but they're kind of just breeders, right? Like, so, um, this woman was talking about how they happened to just be there. And when this, it was on one of those geo beat stories or whatever, I think. And she was just saying that, like the mother like just had the baby and she was kicking the, the poor baby to death. And so her and her husband, they jumped in and they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like what's happening? What's happening? You know? And, um, and they saved this donkey and the mother didn't want anything to do with it. Luckily they were able to nurse her enough to get, you know, milk for the baby, but she didn't want anything to do with it. She was just like, no, get this thing. Because in her mind, it was something that hurt her. It was hurting her. She didn't like the way she felt when it was inside of her. To her, it was like a, a parasite. So when it came out of her, she's like, what the fuck is that? She's not recognizing, like, that's my baby. That's a little mini me. Like, she's not recognizing that. She's, she's, and I thought that is so fascinating. You know, some of you may have known that, but I didn't know that. I just thought that was fascinating. But it just goes to show, like, you know, some people are mothering. Some people aren't. Some people, it's in their nature to, to give. And some people, it's in their nature to take. And some people, it's in their nature to just be in survival mode. And so spirit is saying, like, you know, it sounds aggressive, the analogy, but it is. It's kind of like, you know, if you're with somebody that you're changing and they're not changing or you've changed and they haven't changed enough or not at all or whatever, if, if you're not on the same trajectory, it, you have to like pull yourself away from them. And you never know, like in that time, maybe you will have somebody who will give you all the things that you wanted. And during that time, maybe your absence from their life, your lo their loss of you will help them come correct. And you know, they always say you should only change for yourself. Yes. But some people really want to change, but they need a little fire under their ass of some kind to give them the inspiration to change and you know but you can't be someone's constant muse 
you know it's like they have to they have to put on their own oxygen mask they have to do their own healing they have to go through their own process so you have to let them go recently my partner and I were in a separation like that and um, I had said something to them and then um, a little bit later they said you're like that too and at first I was like mm. but then I was like you know what you're probably right and I've been thinking about it and I was like gosh they were so right and I didn't want to hear that but they were right but sometimes you know, you won't get that part of the conversation until you're away. Sometimes you need, you know, separation so you can have closure. So that you can have that love in your heart that you want to give. I mean, barn owls are one of my, I mean, I love all owls. I love all animals, all creatures, but barn owls are so cool. And I mean, I had an experience with one that changed my life. It like flew at me and I thought I was being transported to another universe the way it happened. And it was at night in front of a full moon. It was so cool. While I was camping, it was like, is this really happening? Is this really, like, I was like, am I awake? Am I, am I and I was stoned. So I was like, is this really fucking happening? You know? And then it got so close and it went, whoom, and it went above me because I couldn't hear it. It was coming towards me, but I couldn't fucking hear anything. But it was massive. Barn owls are very big. And that's when I really was like, holy shit. Like, I don't know who or what the fuck I am, but I know I'm here to do something pretty cool because that was pretty fucking cool. And then I saw them fly off into the trees and then they just like disappeared. And it was like they were just gone. So I feel like, and on that trip, I also was visited by eagles. Like it was just like one of those. So if you were drawn to the eagle uh, spirit medicine, you might want to go and look at that as well. But yeah, there's something powerful there. And I think they may have me put the, the um, medicine for the eagle from this book in the community section, but I don't know. Don't, don't, don't quote me on it. But yeah, there's something really powerful there. So there you are, barn, barn owl. I don't believe there's any more medicine, but let me check in with spirit to see. Do we have any more messages for barn owl at this time? The only thing they want me to say is in the owl spirit medicine book, each of, um, from the Native American outside of this book that I just read for you, medicine, it says, or each of the the creatures have either a phrase or a word and owl for them is deception. So when I just looked down, I saw 249. That's all I saw. And so number two is like, I feel like it's two people and 49 is I, every time I see 49, I see 13 and it's or 94 or 58 or 85 or certain combinations of 13. Like I just see it probably because I'm on my birthday's on the 13th. But um, there is something really powerful in that magic and that medicine for you. And so Spirit's saying some of you are allowing yourself to be deceived by these people because you're still in an old energy. I went down this really weird path yesterday that was kind of bizarre. And all I can tell you is I was in like a buyer's remorse energy that was like kind of heartbreaking. But then I kind of got the vibe, yes, but that's not where I'm supposed to be. That wasn't where I was supposed to be. It's hard to explain and I don't want to go into it, but I feel like that somebody needed to hear that because we will deceive ourselves and say, oh, look at them. But if I had known them, blah, blah, blah. If this had happened, if this, it's so easy to go into the past. But if you were supposed to, you would have. Something told you not to at that time. Believe your gut. I'm hearing some of you are really struggling with this woulda, coulda, shoulda. Now, all you need to do is pull yourself out of like where you are now and let go of the past. Also, nothing is on me, but I feel like something is biting me, but I'm looking down and there's nothing there. And I feel like, yes, like there's something there. There's something beneath the surface where like you feel it, you feel the gnawing, you feel the biting, you can't see it, but there's something that you know that you, something's whispering to you to get out of there. Also, I feel like for some of you, it's a water energy because my eyes went up to the whispers of the ocean deck. I'm looking at my, uh, my my cards right now and yeah by the way that's not an exhaustion from you that's from that's from me like just this day has just been so intense and I'm just wow I just feel so like pff, there's just so many breakthroughs for all of us so don't let the deception of your love for somebody don't go to the past like look at your relationship now what does your relationship look like now with whomever you are now, not who you wish you had been with or who they used to be, but like, who are you with now? 
and look at who you are now. Talk to them about it. And if you get a negative reaction, that is your answer. If you get no answer, that is your answer. Let everything just go and be in the fray right now. Everybody needs to just work on themselves and everything will come together. Also, I'm getting this strong energy. Turquoise is your friend. Turquoise is really good for love. Also, I heard Lemurian crystal and um, quartz crystal as an amplifier. So that will help with the energy, with connecting back to like your angel self, to your heart center, to your heart space, because that's what you are. And I feel like you're in a relationship where this person or this relationship just constantly fucking kills your heart, like comes through and just like with a sword and just like, it could be an air sign too, because my, when I got the sword analogy and I can't help but think that's in tarot, that's air signs. So that's Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And our water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And it could be something that's really heavy in their sign, or it could be in their moon, where their heart is, you know. And if you're not connecting on that level, that that's very, very interesting. Also, love language. That's been coming up a lot lately. Um, thank you so much. We have a lot of people in this tribe that, um, because of you, we've learned so much. Love language, human design, numerology. Um, really find out what is your love language. You know, if you buy into that, if you don't, you don't, you know, but love language could be anything for anybody and it doesn't have to be something through a doctor, you know, whatever, but you need to find out like, what's your love language, meaning like what makes you happy and joyful and like what makes the other person happy and joyful and then feeding into that love language and both understanding the other person's language. Cause if the other person doesn't want to give you the love language that you want, if they're not like willing to give you that, then that means they're not willing to be in the relationship with you the way you want to be. And then that's not your person. And you're going to be fighting that for the rest of your days here. And I don't think that you brought yourself to this reading to hear this message right now, if that's what the result that you really wanted, if that makes any sense. So those are your messages, Barnell. I love you so much. And we'll see you at the next reading. All of my information is in the comments and the description box if you'd like to work with me or if you'd like to donate anything to the tribe. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to be adding new decks to uh, the Amazon wish list. So if you would like a reading uh, with spirit or through me or through the tribe, you can donate or both. <laughs> you can donate a deck. And when you donate a deck, what we do is we open the deck uh, and we do a little reading from, from spirit. Oop. Uh, that might be my landlord because it's August 2nd and it's time for rent to be paid. Um, but that's my thing saying I'm outie. Um, but you know, we'll do that. And then you get like a little reading as well. So, um, you may not know. Oh my God. Hello. Um, hold on one second. Okay, for you, it's been a second. For me, it's been a really long time. So I apologize. I don't know what I was saying, but I love you. I love you. I love you. And I will see you at the next reading. Blessed be. Ow. Welcome, little owl. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put it at 2.55.05 uh, because I looked up and I was like, ooh. Like all those fives, change and transformation, like really powerful. So I'm going to dive right into your interpretation um, or, or your, re I'm like, so much is happening right now. <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. I was there and then I, it's just really, it's really beautiful. Okay, so little owl oft sat on the warm curved shoulder of ancient Greek Athene, queen of all nature. Oracle and soul of wisdom from whom no secrets might be hidden. But it was Little Owl who whispered this secret knowledge in Athene's ear. Little Owl is blessed with the ability to see the future, whatever its portent. So whatever its outcome is basically what they're saying. So you guys like, so, you know, I want to go back to the beginning of the reading. Hold on. So to get the theme, so the theme is which bird is guiding you. So even though I've been saying this throughout the reading and this has been going on for hours and super fun and all that good stuff, I have to tell you, this is the first one where I'm like, it's like hitting home where I feel like which bird is guiding you. And I feel like the fact that you were like honed in on little owl you guys, I, I, you know what, you know what the sad thing is, you guys, I feel your depression, man. 
I fucking feel it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Like I, I'm, I just had something I've been doing these readings. I've been working with this spirit medicine since I woke up early this morning and I'm in like my awesome bubble. I'm like, so I'm just going to share with you my own personal story because it just happened and I didn't share it. It actually happened at the end of the barn owl. So if you watch the barn owl and I was weird at the end, this is why, but I didn't want to bring it into that reading, but, but it's interesting that it's coming into this one because it's a lesson, right? So I was having this amazing amazing day and I mean amazing day from the time I like went outside and was meditating and this reading came together and I've been doing all these readings and now this is reading four but you're the second of four right and then I did one for the tribe so what are we at like seven readings for the day and I'm in this I'm in it I'm channeling it I'm in it I'm in it and then this person just shows up unannounced without being invited doesn't even like message me to say they're coming by just drops off just drops in in my house and like ripped me out of my channeling ripped me out of everything I had to pause everything I thought it was my landlord paying rent uh, because it's the second and I told him you know uh, yesterday I was like hey you know money's here anytime you want to come by and get it you know and I was like, oh shoot, maybe he messaged me and I didn't see it because I'm doing the readings. You know what I mean? I just heard a, a door shut and he never like comes over here because he knows I work from home and I could hear somebody walking towards the, so I was like, oh shit, he probably didn't think about it, whatever. And I went to run out there to be like, hey dude, like, you know, here, you know, the money, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's somebody who I've told repeatedly and have set boundaries for two years have tried and you know it made me realize like sometimes you just <laughs> hold on what I'm telling you I had to take a breather for a minute <laughs> why I'm sharing this with you and why this happened like right before your reading is because I have I have seen this coming I saw this coming a long time ago I saw this whole entire situation I've been in for two years with this person I saw this whole thing like this and it has been the last two years have been so weird for me because I'm like I see something and I'm like why can't I prevent it if I know it's gonna happen like why wouldn't I you know and so they're having me share this with you because you are so gifted and you're so connected to the divine and you see things before they're going to happen. You know, things before they're going to happen. You can smell the bullshit a mile away. You know it. You are a super califragilistic expialidocious light worker, right? Like you're super extra like me. I'm extra. We're just extra. Some of us are just extra. We were created this way. There are tears. It's not like somebody's better or whatever. No, it just means that this person was created for this and this person was created for this. But in order for you to be this, you have to go through all these things. So it's kind of like, it is like a video game. You know, it's like you have to go through these different levels. And I feel like you guys are hiding. I had to just deal with something that was so fucking unsavory and I was ripped out of the channeling. Plus, you know, I use cannabis. So it was like, I was in this channeling. I was in this, you know, and I'm thinking you know, it's my landlord, you know, blah, blah, blah. But something told me it wasn't. And then when I heard their voice and they came around the corner, I was like, I fucking told you to stop showing up at my house like this. I'm like, I am literally in the middle of a session with a bunch of people. And in that moment, I really was like, I don't know the numbers, but like some of these readings, I can feel there's 40 of you. You know what I mean? Like I feel you in the room with me. And I feel like you guys are like that too. And we can no longer allow people to keep trampling our fucking boundaries. We are special. We were brought here for a reason. And if we keep going back to the third dimensional, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And, and I'm sure, and, and the worst part about that was I had to chase them away and they were like, oh, you know, and then they were like all freaked out. But I was like, go, I'm like, you need to go. Like, I was like, I'm not playing. Like, I'm not being a bitch. I'm not like, you know, I had to like get them, force them out of the chair. I was like, you're not invited. Like, it's not, it's not funny or cute or I'm like, I'm working. I'm like, this is my fucking job. And people take for granted that I work from home. And I was like, I try to set my boundaries. I try to tell people and it's just like, oh my gosh, no. And, and you hear me. It's like, 
I had to get, but between that and coming to you, like I had to go around with Bell's spirit and I had to clear the energy up. I was like going all the way up to the fucking freeway. Cause I was just like, holy shit. Because I know they kind of like ran out of here like a bat out of hell and took off. And I was like, yeah, because you didn't get what you wanted. Sorry. You're not, it's not charming. It's not cute. It's not, oh, I, you're not responding to me. I want to talk to you. It's like, just because you know where I live, you don't fucking get the right to just show up at my fucking house. That's why I'm so private with you guys. That's why I don't, you know, give out my address or my phone number very, you know, it's like people just don't fucking get boundaries. And now, and I was like, but you know what? It was actually perfect because it ended exactly the way I saw it. So I don't know. This is where I even have the skip to the jump in my head because it's like, did I make that happen or did I see that coming? And that's where you're frustrated. I feel you. But you know what? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, does it matter? Spirit saying, take these moments of your knowing and your knowledge, sweet owl, and know that you have a much grander, bigger purpose. And there are some of us like, you think I don't want to be in Kumbaya all the time? Of course I do. But then there's sometimes where it's like you have to be ugly because people are ugly and they are children. And right now there are many children running around the planet that refuse to change, but think that because they play with crystals or play with fucking cards or blah, 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 that, oh, I'm, look at me. I'm a seer. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not, I can't, I can't yoga pants. You need to move on. And you guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's like, you can run around in yoga pants all day, but if you ain't fucking doing yoga, just fucking call them pants. Just call them tight pants. <laughs> They're not yoga pants. You know, don't pretend like you are something that you're not. You know, it's like, just own what you are, be who you are. And spirit is getting really fucking serious with you. Drink some water. For some of you who have been with me a long time, you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, and if you don't feel free to message me in private <laughs> or email me, I don't know if I'll get back to it right away, but yeah, like, I mean, I literally had to say to them, I, I don't have to fucking explain myself to you because I haven't talked to you in two months. I, I told you I was working this summer. People, they, they hear what they want to hear. They remember what they want to remember. It just, you know, it is what it is. So very interesting that this little owl medicine aligns with what just, I mean, that's just crazy, but also cool. Like, you know what I mean? Where like, that's just somebody, a character in my movie. I'm the star of my fucking movie. You know, I'm like, dude, go to your movie where you're the star, but don't bring your stuff here and try to, I don't, my thing is I'm tired of people bringing their, like, I'm the star to me and my movie and making me be like some weird fucking supporting character. That's like their shaman and their whatever that they can like brag to their friends about and like put me around and tote me around. Like I'm a trophy. It's like, I, I'm, I ain't nobody's trophy goose. <laughs> my grease fans. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just enough is enough. And you guys have got to just set your fucking boundaries. And it's Athene. It's spelled Athene because I'm like, wouldn't it be with an A if it was Athena? Because I was like, wasn't that Athena? But I'm going to say that's what it is. But the queen of nature. So your nature, your natural gift is to see the future. And also manifestors. You guys are great manifestors. You're witches, like your healers, deep down believers in magic, your angels. Like, you know, we come from different realms. Even if you're, if you identify with angel or dragon or whatever the hell you, you know, whatever the beautiful, whatever it is, you know, it's yours and it's yours alone, whatever you identify with. But this, this is some potent, powerful medicine. And I don't believe that this owl would come to you like that. You know, if it wasn't meant to completely, I mean, sorry, I had to pause for a second because I swear I thought I heard a car because <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, don't make Southside Chicago Kelly come out. Cause I, I'm like, but I wouldn't, it would just be with love, but it would be like, come on. Like, that's the thing is right now, I mean, I'm you know, it took me a good 20, I don't know how many minutes actually to kind of calm down, take a few deep breaths and just like, cause my body was shaking and not because of myself, but because of them, because they had to see the dragon. They had to see a side of me that is, it ain't so pretty, right? 
you push me, you, you, you push me and you push my boundaries. You're going to fucking see who I am and you're going to see what I'm made of. You know, and I feel like it's the same for you. Like I should be able to feel safe in my home and my, like right now I don't feel safe in my home. I don't feel safe right here. Like, I don't feel like, you know, even though we just like cleansed it and did all that, like, I know I'm going to have to do like a deeper cleaning because it felt like that was like a cord cutting thing. Like I almost felt like I just went fume because I handed them something that I'd been working on for them, this project. And it was pretty much 99.9% .9 done and they can finish it themselves. But it was like that thing where I was just like, take this and go. I was like, I am done with this behavior. I am done with this, like whatever here you go. This is my final gift. Goodbye. I was like, Phew. cause sometimes you give people an inch and they take 20 miles. So this is your time. This is your energy from, I'm going to tell you right now, I've said it in a few of the other readings. If you, um, it in real time, we're two days away from the new moon and in how many months from now to the next new moon? I don't know how many months it is. What is that? It doesn't matter. But the new moon in Scorpio, and I think it's November 2nd from now until then is like this amazing portal of a lot of shit that's going to happen. You know, we have the new moon in Leo, then Mercury's going full retrograde. Then we have the eight, eight portal. And then there's so many other things that are going to take place after that. Not to mention all the astrological things that are happening. Pluto, I can go on and on. I, I don't know. And, and I would be like just telling you things that I've, you know, watched myself. So, and then of course we'll have eclipse season again. You know, so I feel like at the end of this year, we're all going to be able to breathe. But from now until the beginning of November, just focus on yourself, Co focus on your creative things, focus on your own journey, your spiritual path. Don't let these people, these, you know what I mean? Like even myself, you know, thank you. I can feel like some of you are like, I can feel some of you mad for me and I love you. Thank you for supporting me. That's, you know, I didn't, it just was, it was too much that I, I, I wasn't going to say anything until I read that. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I totally see what's happening because it really is the time that people need to stop treating, treating us. It's not like, oh, look at us. Like we see into the future. We're seers or we're light workers or angels or whatever. It's not, it's, it's about like have fucking respect that I am here. And if you're wanting to work with me or if you're wanting to be in my energy field, then you need to respect what I am and what I'm doing here. You know, because I'm like, yeah, dude, let's stay in the high vibration. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Right. Like, cause I'm going to bring that light back up. But at the same time, it's also, there are some of us, if you chose this little owl, there are some of us that were chosen to be like, you know, like I think of like pink, you know, look at pink. Pink is like, she's so masculine and so feminine, but she is like the same. She will love you up, love you up, but she will also fucking put you in your place. So, you know, sometimes people need to be put in their place. They're begging for it because they didn't have, you know, a lot of times when people do that, it's like bullying, right? Because that's bullying, like showing up to my house and all that, even though I've asked you not to, that's a form of bullying, even though somebody may not see that. But it's like, that's your space. That's your, you know, they have to respect your energy and your space. If they don't, then they're not allowed to be there, right? And if you keep telling somebody you know, and they're not listening. It's like, okay, well then either you have Alzheimer's and you need to go to the doctor and find out like why you cannot retain this information or you need to like, that's it. Like I, we're done. We're done. We're done. And I feel like for some of you, it's time to, at least if you don't feel like this is who you are, I feel like this is who you're meant to embody. And maybe you're one way or the other. Maybe you're fully just like, fuck you. Or maybe you're like, oh, I love everybody. And they're like, no, you got to find the balance. Right? Nature is in balance. They just said that she is the queen of nature, Athene, right? And her owl, little owl. So they help keep nature in balance. And they're like, that's how we keep nature in balance. Take it as a fucking rite of passage. Like, be proud of yourself that you were created, like, you know, and it doesn't mean we're better or anything. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's just like we were created to like walk the path first and, and be in the middle and say, yes, I see from both sides, but I am telling you, like, you know, it's like, you're not in my orbit if you're not going to apply by my rules because it's my fucking show. I am the star of my movie. End of fucking story. And we have to get real. Oh my gosh. It paused at 33 hours, 11 minutes and 30 seconds where it looked like a mirror of 13. Holy shit. It felt like it hung there for seconds. 
But you know what I hear, you know, divine witches is that's what they're saying. Like bring the love, but you have to bring tough love too. He wouldn't even, that the interesting thing was he, he, the second I went to like, it wasn't good. He's running away. He doesn't want to stand there and hear what he did or what's happening. He's just like, Oh, okay. okay, okay. And it's like, no. And I was like chasing him saying like, I've asked you, please don't do this. Like, and, and he's just like running away. And that's what's happening with the divine masculine right now. All these little boys are running around, you know, because they don't understand what's happening. And it's like, you know, I'm not saying it's everybody, but there's definitely, it's the divine masculine embodied. And this is somebody who I'm dealing with who is very divine masculine embodied and has a very like entitled, you know what I mean? And it's no. And I've been trying to tell them for a long time. And I don't normally talk out of school like this, but it came into being. So I'm taking it as a lesson. And even thank you to them. I when I was when they hauled ass out of here, I was like laughing. I was shaking because I can feel the nervousness. But I was I was in love, like sending them love, going, Oh, like I hate doing that. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I love you so much. Like, ah. You know, but then there's also this part of me, you know, I had to do that to bring the love back in. And that's what we have to keep doing, you guys. We just have to keep bringing the love back in. And we're still in this 313 minute, you know, energy, right? Because it's so, because it's three hours and 13 minutes, you know, it's like, this is a really powerful energy. Oh gosh. And then when I looked, it was 313, 13. So that is your message. I don't believe we have anything else unless they want me to read from the um, Native American book. Do you want me to read anything from here for Little Owl? <sighs> Do we have many more messages for Little Owl today? It's almost like I feel like Little Owl. I know in the imagery it said it says Tiny Little Owl, right? But, um, and interesting because the Brown Owl before that is like the biggest. So interesting. Um, I didn't even put that together till now. But it's, I feel like the Little Owl is also like a metaphor for us. Like stop playing small is what I'm hearing from Spirit. Like stop fucking playing small. It's time for you to rise up uh, out of that. You know what I mean? Like be the phoenix like we're i don't know if was it this reading i've done so many now but we talked about it in one of these readings like it's time to be the fucking phoenix man rise out of the ashes and say nope no more i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it that's why they had me film it in this form for so you to stay in your story right because when i'm telling you and sharing with you my stuff i want you to place yourself in those stories like who who did you think of who were you imagining when you were you know hearing that story you know, it's like, what, who is, who is this person that just will not fucking keep the boundaries? And they're like, that is it, you know? So those are your messages. I love you so much. Please start loving yourself first more. Okay. And, and this is for me too, right? Cause I'm sharing my experience. So this is a message to me too. This is, we share this little owl together, my friends and my family, my, my warrior siblings, we are in this together. Right? So we are not alone, but we are going to keep doing it. And we're going to keep setting those boundaries until people finally grow up and out of that old energy because it's not serving them anymore. And it's just an old pattern that needs to break because respect is a major key with spirit too. love and respect. That's why they come together because you can love somebody, but if they're going to trample all over you all the time, that's not them. They're disrespecting you. And that's not what this is about. This isn't their show. They could just fucking disrespect, bully, do whatever they want. No, it's called narcissism. I'm going to leave it there. I love you so much. I'll see you next time. All of my information is in the comment section and the description box. I put them in both places. If you'd like to work with me or contribute or donate anything to this beautiful, beautiful mission, I will see you next time. Take good care of yourselves and each other. I love you. Bye. Bye. Bless it be. Ow. <laughs> and last but never least, our third and final owl. Well, technically, I guess it's the fourth, but I feel like the owl at the beginning of this was the owl encompassed spirit. And I feel like the barn owl and little owl and short eared owl are like specific bird medicine that really, really wants to work with you and guide you through whatever you're going through right now. So I haven't read this one and it's really exciting. So we're going to be doing this together. They asked me to read what's on the cover of the card first, and it says, inner peace and a sense of wonder are regained by immersing yourself in nature oh i love this okay so it says mysterious wisdom incarnate who does not know short-eared owl few may see her as she flies in the velvety darkness of night 
but many may hear her cries and eerie hoots and feel their spine tingle the hairs on the nape of their neck stand for even in our technologically saturated world, short-eared owls' cries may still evoke a sense of wonder as ancient as humanity. Whoa! And when I looked up, it was exactly three hours and 17 minutes. Wow, that's the number 11, beautiful angels. Okay, so her message to you is, if short-eared owl has graced your reading today, she counsels it is time to see again the world with your own eyes, not through the medium of the smartphone or camera, to wander technology-free into the magic of nature and feel all its extraordinary powers as our shamanic ancestors once did, to understand that you are part of nature, not apart from it and thus to feel at peace with the world and yourself. That's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm feeling such intense energy all around me. I feel like you guys, I don't know if you guys are feeling a lot of shadow. I apologize where I live. It's really um, busy traffic and it's summertime and a Friday, but this is when they called me to do it. So, oh, so many crazy things have happened since I started this reading. And if you were drawn to Little Owl, I talk about it in there. If not, I'm sure I'll do something for Lulu's life at some point because it was just too intense and wild and and crazy so um, yeah since this reading has started I feel like I have been down a road of righteousness and I'm just so proud of all of us and you guys 318 I'm being called to it's also number 12 but the 318 might mean something to you but it was you know three semicolons so it could even be three and then 18 and then eight and one is nine and you know, this is like, this year is like all about three, six, nine energy. Okay. So I'm feeling, um, interesting that this card is about inner peace and a sense of wonder are regained by immersing yourself in nature. I think that's exactly what is called for. And maybe that's why it's so loud in the nature and you know what I mean? Or I'm sorry, the traffic, <laughs> because if, if I had, if I wasn't this close to a freeway and it was just where I am right now on these five acres with these elder trees and you know what I mean? There's all these animals. There's a new baby bunny living in our neighbor neighborhood. We've all been taken care of. We think they lost their parents. I mean, you know, like I have like a completely different relationship with the outside than I, with that world than I do with what's going on on the freeway. It's like, it's almost like to me, it's just like a river that just passes by. It's just like a really loud river and it's like loud some days and not so much the other days, you know? Um, but when I go to clean the property and pick up garbage, like that people just, I don't know if it flew out of their car or they threw it out of their car, but it's alarming how much garbage is just in front of like the five acres, you know, in front of that, you know, I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's like, wow. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So <laughs> hold on one second. Okay. Um, I'm just feeling like this intense energy. There's so many, there was too many messages coming in at once and I can feel that I'm tired and I haven't eaten since yesterday. I've been kind of not fasting, but kind of, you know, letting my body rest because I ate too many. When I ate too much of something, I try to not give my body that for a while so it can rest. And maybe that's a message to you, but yeah, I mean, this connection you know, to the outer world is wonderful. Like, obviously we're doing this right, like together, but at the same time, you know, I'm still like at my house and I can look outside and it may look like nature, but that freeway reminds me that it's the world is still moving around me no matter what. And it made me realize I'm like, I need to live like far away from people. <laughs> you know, like far away from traffic, far away from people, or at least in a neighborhood that's like, you know, quiet and you can't go more than like 10 or 15 miles per hour because, you know, being next to that energy is really intense. And I feel like that's a message for you guys, you know, like it's like wherever you're, I feel, I just feel like your home life feels like really busy. I also feel like you don't want to talk about this because I feel like I, I, I feel like something keeps holding my tongue. Like I want to talk to you and I want to tell you this stuff, but it's like something is like holding me back, but it's not, it's you. It's like you, there's just like, even though on the outside, this card says inner peace and a sense of wonder are regained by immersing yourself in nature. It's like, it's like, it starts with inner peace, but I feel like it's like the opposite. That's exactly what you're lacking. And it's the short eared owl. It's like, and I also feel like it means like, 
I keep hearing like short end of the stick or like you're not like getting what you want or what you're dude there is the weirdest energy here I had something really unsavory happen and I thought I cleared the energy and everything was good and now it's like coming back in it's almost like whatever this person brought here is like still here so I feel like it might be your stuff trying to talk to me too so work through the shadow aspect of this because I know I'm protected I know I'm loved up you know what I mean like everything happens for a reason so I know I'm good but there's definitely this fear that I can't stop like feeling at, at like the base of your you know you know and it's interesting because um, it said you know which bird is guiding you and I feel like the owl is trying to guide you but they're like they're like, we can see at night, but you can't. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You can, you can channel the energy of the owl to see into the shadow, into the darkness. Be like, please help me illuminate my shadow, my darkness. Like, what is it? What's coming? Because that's what it feels like. I, Ever since I started your reading, I keep looking over the back of my shoulder, which is weird because I don't feel like that. I feel very protected. Even with the three-way and all that, like, I feel very, very safe. I never, ever, like... When I first got to this property, I saw this shadow figure of a man. Like, I saw twice, I saw um, this shadow figure. And long story short, I realized that they were just giving me a kind of an ominous energy because they thought, like, you know, they're like, what are you doing here? Because in their mind, like, they still live here. Like, you know, like they didn't know they were dead. Two people that died here died in their sleep. There may be more, but two for sure died in their sleep. And that could be very disconcerting. So long story short, now it's like it's turned around where I feel like they're protecting me. I feel like they know I care about this property and I care about what's happening here and I'm looking out for it. And I, I can feel, you know, this property has been here since the 1800s and it's only been with, I think, three families or something. So, yeah, it's pretty serious. So I do definitely feel protected. Um, but there is something with you guys that like you are protected like I am, but you don't think you are. And you're the one that's allowing the darkness in, you know, like I've smudged people's homes before. And I've told them at the beginning, I'm like, this is going to be a fruitless endeavor. If you're going to go back to these ways, because you're the one that's bringing the shadow in, you're the one that's, you know, doing this. So you're literally creating it. And I feel like that's a message for you guys, like almost like you're creating a fear or creating a darkness because you now you it's like you do believe in hope and faith and love and light like you do believe in that you are strong and you're like no darkness get out of here you know you're like get out of here before a house falls on you too like you know that and you're pushing it back but i feel like you've kept yourself small a lot throughout your existence because of what you are and because people have told you like who you are and you know what I mean? Like I'm feeling that really, really strong, but it says to wander technology free into the magic of nature and feel all its extraordinary powers as our shamanic ancestors did. Yeah. You think your ancestors saw a magical sunrise and were like, you know, I'm going to wake up the whole tribe for everybody to see it. Maybe, you know, <laughs> but maybe they're just going to sit there and enjoy it and feel like, wow, look at this blessing I'm receiving. Maybe they'll see, you know, Joe down five rocks away, you know, and they're like, Hey, isn't this like amazing? <laughs> I'm like pointing to it. Who knows? But it's like, yeah, I mean, this morning I had this magical sunrise, which brought this whole entire reading together with the spirit animals. And it was so magical. I wanted to run in and get my camera because it was so magical. And they're like, no, no, this is a creation between us and you. This is a download. And I was like, Oh wow. Okay. So, you know, step away from your phone, step away from technology. They're there to help us, but they're not there to like, you know, everybody wants to rule the world. I watched this very interesting video about YouTube. Um, somebody who's a creator, but also works for YouTube and was explaining how, not just how, how the algorithms work, but just how like everybody's become a channel now. <laughs> they're like, everybody thinks their lives are interesting. He's like, and they're not. He's like, it's not being a jerk. They're just not they're like oh that's my life but not the interesting part of my life the boring part of my life right so they're like show us your interesting part of your life and then maybe we'll talk and so they said there's literally like the amount of channels and the amount of people who actually watch is like the amount of channels is like like a gazillion times more than people that watch <laughs> drink some water like you know of course you know not that number but you know what i mean like so you know it's like you do the math, but playing small isn't going to get you where we need you to be. And if you're deceiving yourself, which is the key word of, um, 
the owl from the native sorry I'm again I'm, I'm downloading again they want me to read this to you again they said to understand that you are part of nature not apart from it and thus to feel at peace with the world and yourself meaning like it's not just about the nature part it's almost like some of you have completely detached and you're not in this world and you're not in that world you're just kind of like floating and they understand that but they're like it's not like pick a side it's more like no <laughs> you spirit guides are like no pick a side like meaning like just know that you're this fifth dimensional like you've gone into the fifth dimension right but your your body and whatever is still there's parts of the third dimensional energy that are still here right because the planet it's it's hard to explain I, i'm i'm like i don't have it in me to go into the whole thing but but they want you to understand that you are a part of it just like it's a part of you even if you live in the city right like the bricks that you know the bricks came from somewhere the pipes came from somewhere it's like you're in a city but it's like it's almost like i see somebody like in their apartment and you have tons of plants and whatever blah 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 and it's like you only go into the like the city part to like work get your groceries whatever and then you go back into your little apartment and they're like but why do you even live there if you don't want to you know what i mean they're like move to like you're not a tree you're not like deeply rooted. You can move anywhere you want to move. And oh my gosh, I was wondering if this was going to come in. When I looked up, it was 328 and it was 01, then 2, then 3, but definitely 328. So I feel like March 28th is either this year or it's next year for some of you guys. And I, before I started this, I was, you know, I smoked cannabis and, um, there was this leaf that literally looked like a, I was going to take a picture of it. Cause I'm like, dude, come on. It literally looks like California. Like I, it looks like California. And they were like, no, 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 no. They're like, you'll get it. So I feel like for some of you it's California. I don't know where or what part, um, that's between you and spirit and meditation. Cause it could be many things to many people. It could even just be a vacation. I don't know, but I'm definitely, um, felt that California, I mean, I saw it right before that happened. Um, I'm also feeling like this kind of like, um, underground energy, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm feeling uh, carnelian, pyrite, quartz crystal, amethyst. So write those down. Um, I think that's it. There's, I'm hearing something on the roof, but you know, there's a bird that's always up on the roof. Oh my goddess. Here we go. So in the last reading for Little Owl, they spoke about Athene. And if you were drawn to Little Owl, you might want to go back. Oh, it was so powerful. Um, talking about how Little Owl is like this powerful, you know, well, if you're drawn to it, you'll go. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, it says, is it any wonder that in many cultures, owl is a symbol for wisdom? This is because owl can see that which others cannot which is the essence of true wisdom. Where others are deceived, owl sees and knows what is there. Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, had a companion owl on her shoulder, which revealed unseen truths to her. Owl had the ability to light up Athena's blind side, enabling her to speak the whole truth as opposed to only a half truth. If owl is your personal medicine, no one can deceive you about what they are doing, no matter how they try to disguise or hide it from you. You may be a little frightening to be around since so many people have ulterior motives, which you see right through. If you are unaware of your medicine power, you may take your keen insights and abilities for granted. Others never do. You may frighten them and reflect their blindness, for you cannot be fooled. All medicine people know more about an individual's inner life than that person knows about herself or himself. If you have pulled the owl card, you are being asked to use your powers of keen, silent observation to intuit some life situation. Owl is befriending you and aiding you in seeing the total truth. Owl can bring you messages in the night through dreams or meditation. Pay attention to the signals and omens. Omens. <laughs> oh, omens. The truth always brings further enlightenment. I feel like I need to like... I feel like this is everybody now. I feel like that part was everybody. So thank you. Um, what is it? I want to make sure. Thank you, short-eared owl. Uh, and then I feel like we went straight into like saying goodbye from like the main spirit owl like itself. So like I just feel, yeah. And because they always have a contrary, they want me to read this. So I'll leave you all with this. If you have owl upside down in your cards, in your reading, you have been greatly deceived by either yourself or another. Perhaps witchcraft or black magic is being used against you. Or maybe you are using witchcraft or sorcery to aid you when you should be praying and asking the great spirit for guidance. The message is to befriend the darkness inside yourself. Look deeply 
and soon the bright light of dawn will illuminate you. Then ask yourself, what are you in the dark about? How and by whom are you being deceived? Have you lied to yourself about someone or something? Are you being greatly deceived or just slightly deceived? Owl tells you to keep an eye on your property and your loved ones. Remember that Owl is always asking, who? Wow, so that is some serious medicine, my friends. So yeah, that's what I thought of. So basically, yeah, so Athena, Athena, it's the same. It's the same, I believe it's the same person, right? It's the same goddess, the same energy. So, you know, if you were drawn to any of the other owls, I highly suggest you go back and watch them. But this was amazing. Thank you guys so much. So much has transpired. <laughs> I'm like, I've been recording for three and a half hours, but I'm not joking. I literally at this point, like, don't know. I know that once this is done, I'm going to upload this and take me a break. I'm tired and I'm hungry, but it was awesome. And I can't wait to like, let this all marinate and saturate even like the uninvited, you know, energy that came in, but obviously was meant to be here for a reason. So so, wow, just like so much to, you know, yeah. So reading all of you guys, I was going to say reading for, you know, but I mean, we all know. So anyway, I love you. I love you. I love you. Take really good care of yourselves and each other. All of my information is in the comment section and in the description box. If you would like to work with me or if you'd like to donate or contribute anything to this time and energy on this channel never ever expected but appreciated i love that because it's true all right i'll see you next time love you so much blessed be oh